Perfect. What's up, everybody? I am Dope Zola. Welcome to the first episode of the Dope As Usual podcast. We are here to talk about life, problems, accomplishments, drugs, and everything in between. Guys, this is the very first episode. This is a long-awaited uh, project for Marty and I. Marty right here is Jurassic Graphics. That's What's my up? producer. What up, Marty? Um, guys, first episode. For those of you that aren't a fan already, um, let me tell you a little bit about what's been going on. We've been trying to do this for over a year. We've been trying to get it done. And like I said, I know a majority of you here uh, that are listening are fans. But if you're not a fan already and you have no idea who the fuck I am, I'm going to explain today a little bit, give you a little backstory on why we're here, why we're listening, and how this is going to be fun as fuck. So, guys, real quick, just like other podcasts, I have to do the ad read. You ready? Today's uh, video, today's podcast, today's episode is sponsored by us. Nobody gave a shit. We paid for this by ourselves. Yeah, yeah this is our warehouse, man. <laughs> we got a fucking warehouse because we wanted to do this right. At the, at the first, we were like, how can we design the other room in my apartment? How is it going to look cool? And then I thought, I don't want to bring guests to my apartment to do podcasts like I'm fucking 19. I just can't do it, dude. Plus, I don't want people in my fucking house. Got to be honest. Um, yes, guys. First episode. My name is Thomas. My, fr- my real name is Thomas. I go by Dope Ziola on the internet. I'm just going to give you a little backstory. The way I sum it up to everyone, that the elevator pitch. What do you do for a living? I smoke weed for a living. That's that's at the at essentially at the base, the core of everything I do is weed. I fuck with weed. I make weed videos, fun stuff, reviews, stories about. So I used to sell weed my whole life. So that's what I do. My name is Dopeziola. I get high as fuck for a living. For those of you that don't know who I am, so in uh, 2012, I started Instagram. Just started posting pictures, posting weed pictures. Thought it was fun. Started gaining a following. Started doing, recreating scenes with weed. Like I did the Reservoir Dogs. We chops Marvin Nash's ear. Or he slices it off. I did that with nugs. I had the little nugs slicing a part of the head off of the nug. Like just stupid shit. I did Rambo First Blood. A bunch of dead bodies. Just fun, man. I always put myself as. Remember in Forrest Gump when he's really not there at the college and he hands the lady her book. That's what I did. I did stuff that you had to think. Is this a real picture? But no, guys, I just want to fuck with people. That's all That's all I ever want to do. I want to make funny shit. I want to make you laugh. Like I say, I'm Bobby, I'm Bobby Hill. I'm all pop culture. Everything in my life is just revolves around references. I'm the cable guy, but I'm not weird. I grew up on TV. My mom's like, hey, sit down and watch this while I go do drugs. I'm like, so that's how I grew up. So that's uh, TV raised me. That's why I did so many pictures with weed. Um, like I said, I started posting more, got a big following started getting paid to go to places and do reviews for videos and stuff like that try this weed and then it got to the point where like hey here's some money here's the weed can you do a video and that's when i realized i am getting paid to smoke fucking weed coolest job on the planet i am probably the luckiest person that you could think of and it's so weird when i go to sleep and i I don't think of that when i wake up i don't think of that then somebody reminds me like yo you got the coolest job in the fucking world. I'm like, yeah, I do. It's really fucking fun. So that's what I do, guys. I um, have a YouTube channel. We just hit a million subscribers. Yeah. Fuck yeah, guys. We hit a million. Even though YouTube deleted us 5,000 away from a million, I get constantly deleted. I got deleted off Instagram today. I, I text Marty, hey, I made a new account. Two hours later, I text Marty, it's gone. <laughs> I know that was true, right? It was what two hours later, Marty? Not even. You're like, yeah, we'll see how long this one stays up for, just for fun. It's at like 20k. You got 20k in a couple hours. <laughs> By the time it. our YouTube video was uploaded, that shit was gone. Yeah, guys. Um, so that uh, that that's what happens. I get to lead off the internet. I think we're just too explicit. Uh, I used to sell drugs. Care package. We got our first care package coming in, guys. I hope it's weed. With this care package, just keep going for all you Call of Duty fans. And it's gone. All right. So, guys, um, yeah, this is the first episode, so bear with me. I've never talked just for a fucking hour and a half. I've never done that without having to do cuts because when I make videos, I edit that shit. I am not doing everything in one take. It's impossible. I'm smoking mass amounts of weed. I fuck my words up. So, 
This is the first one, guys. This is fun for me. I'm super fucking excited. I am so excited, guys. This is it. Everyone that's been following me, we've been talking about the podcast for a year. It took nine months to find to find this warehouse. It took nine months during COVID. Nobody wanted our money. Nobody wanted to rent me shit. I think they were Googling my name and they said, oh, get this fucking guy out of my warehouse. He's going to grow weed here. I don't grow weed. Excuse me. But I think that's what happened. We put Marty's name on it. Got it. First one. First one. They're like, yeah, come come down. You got a deposit? <laughs> and then we got the warehouse, dude. It um, kind of work out like that. It did work out like that. That's exactly what happened. Um, so, yes, that's what we've been doing. It's like nine months. We got this set built. Shout out to Steve and Gary. They came over here, took a couple dabs, built our shit. Deanna painted it. Looks bomb as fuck. Marty designed it. Oh, no. Deanna designed it, I think. Yeah, it was a, a drastic graphics project. A drastic graphics project. project, guys. It was awesome. It looks great. Thank you guys for being here. So I want to get straight into it. I want to talk about, like I said, this is the first episode. So if you don't know who, where we, who we are, what we've been doing, I just want to give you a backstory. That way you're not, you might be listening to this in your car on the way to work. It's raining hard as fuck and it's Southern California. I have no idea what's going on. But if you're in your car, it's the first time you ever um, listened to anything I've done or first time you ever heard of me. What's up, guys? What's up? Nice to meet you. My name is Thomas. I like to smoke weed. I make a lot of stuff. I make videos. I own a clothing company called, right here, Push Trees. Just made it as a joke, and now it's it's one of the top uh, streetwear brands right now, and I'm really happy to say that, guys. It's, it's so fucking weird to say... What do you do? I make, uh, I smoke weed for a living. Well, no, what do you do? What? Oh yeah, I make clothes. Does it do good? It does great. I always forget about that because we're so busy. We have the podcast. We have three other businesses. We have a couple pages. So I'm trying to make my life. This is the point, turning point, guys. This is it. Episode one. I'm in the middle of a transition in my life where everything is starting to work right. For the past eight years, I haven't been getting paid. Remember I said earlier, I started getting paid. That was last year. I just started getting paid doing this before. It was just uh, clothing. I sold clothing to pay my rent so I can make more videos, do this. Now we got the warehouse. Everything's just, everything's coming together. So thank you guys for being here. If you're on your way to work, if you're on your way to your homies, if you're just chilling with your homies, what's up, guys? This is on fucking an actual platform like Spotify, Apple, wherever you're listening to this. Holy shit. I know, man. I know. I'm, I'm excited. I'm as excited as you are. For everyone that's a fan, what's up? Thank you for fucking supporting me. Thank you for supporting everything we do. We are officially on the platforms, guys. We get deleted off Instagram all the time, so I was, they always think of me as like a fucking drug dealer because I was a drug dealer. But now we're we're trying, Marty. We're trying. We're getting there. We're getting uh, to where they might give us that blue check mark. We'll see. Um, yeah, guys, uh, this is it. I just wanted to start off right there. And since you know what I've been doing for the past eight, nine years, like I said, making the videos, starting the brands, making content. You might have seen me in a bunch of fucking weed memes. I'm sure you have them. It's all over the Internet. Guys, this is what I've been trying to do my whole life. I've, I've Since I was a child, since I was a little, little fucking kid, I've wanted to do something with TV. I want to do something with movies, acting. And then I just straight gave up because I was working, going to college. And then this fell in my lap. This fell in my lap and it allows me to do whatever I want. I get to make people laugh. And when people come up to me in public and they're hyped, they're hyped like I was when I was a kid if I would have met fucking Adam Sandler. Like, you know what I mean? Like Adam Sandler, Brett Favre, my heroes as kids. So if I would have met them as kids, that's how I, I'm, that's the, I feel like that's the same reaction. I had fucking grown ass men just literally cry so fucking. Ha- I, I mean, I love it. It's so fun knowing that people are just happy that there's a new video. They're happy to get a response like i love that man if i can make someone's day by doing just what i should do you know what i'm saying just what i should be doing it was giving back taking the time out to talk to people that is the ultimate that's why i didn't charge for for so long i just love doing it and if i can make someone happy by just doing what i love man rich if i ever get rich that's awesome but if i don't this is super fucking cool this is enough for me knowing that there's a bunch of people out there that are super fucking happy when they think of the stuff i've done that's enough for me. So now that we're on there, guys, I want to take you back. I want to take you back a little bit. I'm going to light up one of these motherfucking joints. Um, so, yeah, I I, uh, I can smoke weed on Spotify, right? We can get high on here. Yeah. I'm going to light this bitch up. Okay, guys, let's light this up, and I'm going to get into the beginning. I want to get into the very start. You know where I'm do- what I'm doing now. You know, um, 
well, the basis of it, what I've been doing for the past couple of years. Let me tell you about my little bit about my life, and this will give you a better, I guess, grasp on the type of person or I am. And I just want to give you the backstory. This is my this is my uh, origins episode. This is episode one. All right, so bear with me. Here we go. I'm gonna light this up. Sorry, one second. There it goes. If any of you guys are falling asleep because it's so calm, it's raining. <laughs> that's 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 slow, <laughs> soft ass soothing sound. That's we did raining. that on purpose. Yeah, we did it on purpose. We actually asked the government to make it rain today, and they did. Well, I meant make it rain, like give me money, and then this is what happened. But I'll take it. Here we go, guys. Real quick, let's do this. I am from Merced, California. Oh, care package coming in hot. Woo! All right, care package. We get a lot of those out here. It's L.A., guys. Someone's getting shot every five fucking seconds. There's helicopters all day. Yesterday was a police chase. I left my warehouse and somebody got shot with a shotgun. That was crazy. Here we go. Guys, I'm from Merced, California. If you have no idea what Merced is or where it's at, it's it's exactly in the middle of the state of California. It is straight dog shit. It is a trash fucking town. I love that. <coughs> I'm from there, so I can say that. I always say that. You can't talk shit about Merced unless you're from Merced. Merced sucks. It doesn't have much to do. There's meth, CPS paperwork, Section 8, people asking for money outside of Jack in the Box, tweakers. That's pretty much. Yes. Thank you for bringing it up on the screen. Yeah, looks like Merced. Oh, you guys saw on the news, six inmates escaped from jail. That's Merced. All those Mexican kids that just ran out of jail. That's how poorly operated our town is that you're like, yo, I don't want to finish my sentence. Well, there's the door. That's exactly Merced, guys. Yeah, there it is right there. Wait, three more escaped? Oh, no, three who escaped are caught. Yeah, yo, it's. Get the fuck out of here. I'm rooting, I'm rooting one time that I'm rooting for these criminals, man. Like, yo, get out of there. Merced sucks. So I'm from Merced, guys. I grew up there my whole life. I lived in L.A. for a year. lived in Fresno for a year when I was a kid. Um, My mom, my mom had me at 18, had my sister at 16. So my mom was a kid raising kids. So a little backstory, when I was a child, my mom's cool now. When I was a child, my mom was a fucking dickhead. My dad, been cool forever super on drugs, but always worked. He always smoked crank. I didn't know that until I was older, but he always worked. I just thought he was, you know, he had wide eyes. <laughs> I just thought he doesn't like food during the day, but no, it's because he was on crank and he would be on one for three days straight. <laughs> I remember there was a, t you guys know Costco pizzas. Here's a reference. You guys know the size of a fucking Costco pizza, the big ones, right? They're massive. They're the size of my back. They're huge. So, I remember it was my dad's weekend after my mom and dad broke up. I went to my grandma's. That's where like the meeting place was. And my dad, he was gone. We had him for the he had us for the weekend. He was gone both days. He comes back the last day from working, falls asleep, doesn't say anything. I'm shaking him, and I kind of got worried because he would not wake up, and I could see him breathing. So I just left him alone. This man slept for like twelve hours. I went outside. It was the next morning on Monday. I went outside to fucking to fuck around. Came back in and my dad was on the last like three pieces of that pizza. And that's when I realized like, oh, you're on drugs. You haven't ate in three days. Your body just said, hey, it's dying. You want to get that pizza? And that's where I caught him at. Um, later on, I would be smoking my little shitty joints and blunts in the, in the field while my dad was hiding from me so he could snort his little fucking lines of crank. And I thought I was slick with Scott Ducey and Nick fucking... Oh, we're in the bush, mom. My dad's busy. He's in the garage. He, he, he doesn't know what we're doing. And little does my dad, and little we know my dad's in there. Ah, they're out there smoking weed, trying to pretend that they're not smoking weed. I'm going to do my crank oh, real hilarious. quick. <laughs> Yo, but real quick, for being a crank can my whole life, my, my dad's whole life when I was younger, he's funny as shit. He's a nice ass motherfucker. And he's sober now, so that's cool. But he always worked. So I always give it up to my dad. My mom, too. She had two jobs my whole life, even though she was smoking meth when I was younger. But um, that's my life. I grew up. I am a brown. As you can see, I'm brown. I do not speak Spanish, and I'm in a Mexican town. You can probably guess how that went for me. Growing up, I was shunned. 
I was shunned at every family party. Like, no, no, Espanol. Like, ah, uh, that's my thing. Ah, uh, and then they look at my dad and my grandma. Ah, uh, like, fuck you guys. You know, like, fuck you. That's how I always thought. Like, fuck, man. I don't speak Spanish. Why don't you guys teach me? You fucks. I was just going to say, teach me. Teach me, you pieces of shit. I'm over here trying to, I remember how many times I had to translate for my grandpa to people coming over the house, like, uh, UPS guy or fucking uh, satellite dish guy. And I remember one time I'm trying to, like, grandpa, he needs it smaller. And I'm looking at the guy that speaks English. He's looking at me like, "Uh, this is stupid. I'm not going to have a kid translate that doesn't speak the fucking language that I'm trying to translate. He could have done that. That's the one time I remember thinking, yeah, I need to learn Spanish, man. This is bad. And when I went to Mexico, I got made fun of a lot. You'd have thought you'd have picked up on the basics, though. Like, oh, I know the basics. Okay, no. Hold on. This is it. I know when you're talking shit about me. I know if you're going to jump me. I know if you're going to. That's just more vibes. Uh, you, that's no, more that's, vibes. That's violent. No, no, because. Spanish is what we're. Because I, I know, I know the basics of like, hey, let's jump this fucking guy. Like, I know that. That's why I need to learn Spanish. Because I went to Spa- uh Damn, I went to Spanish with my grandma. <laughs> I went to Mexico with my grandma when I was like 20. And we were waiting at a stoplight, guys. And what I heard made me never want to go back to Mexico. This guy behind me is talking to this regular looking Mexican man in a plaid shirt and boots regular man and this is in tijuana in the middle of the of in the middle of the earth in the town that these people live in this guy's regular looking dude is talking to some gangster ass fool i mean face tatted 13 on his fucking cheeks but he's speaking uh english proper ass english too so it's like oh you're from america you're just chilling in, in mexico right that's what i think I what I hear next makes me just like cringe. I didn't want to turn around. I just walked with my grandma. Like, let's get get me the fuck out of here, grandma. I don't want to be. I am a real American. That's how I felt like fucking Hulk Hogan. Like, yo, Mexico's not for me, bro. <laughs> what you just said made me just fucking want to Hulk out, fucking wear American flags, and never come back because it scared the shit out of me. This man straight up start talking to this guy behind me. I'm waiting at a stoplight. He goes, do you hear about, he said a, a Spanish name. I don't know how to say it. He said this name. He's like, hear about so-and-so? And he goes, yeah, fool. What the fuck? Why'd you do that? She goes, that wasn't me. He said, like, I don't do shit like that. That fool got, poor. he said, they burned that fool. I don't do stupid shit like that. This man says, I didn't do that one. They burned him. I don't do shit like that. This man basically said, Oh, I'm a killer. You know I'm a killer. You thought I burned that guy? Fool, I wouldn't burn somebody. That was a ca- casual conversation these guys were having, and I will. it will never, never not be in my brain because I remember thinking, oh, you just, oh, this is a sport for you. You don't give a fuck. You're openly talking about this shit. I'm out. And then I stayed awake all night in the hotel, watched a boxing match that was super staticky, like a... Home Alone 2, when they get fucking stuck in Miami and their, their TV's all shitty, that's how it was. Uh, woke up the next day, went to the place that my grandpa took me for the doctor. He wanted to put a needle in my back, and I went, uh, fuck you. And my grandpa got pissed that I didn't want to do it. And I came back, and I never, I never left. And I've been in America since. No, I went to Mexico and Cancun, but that was to a resort. I'm, f- I'm fine with that. But that's where they made fun of me for not speaking Spanish. Marty, how the fuck did we get off on this topic? Oh, my. Oh, yeah. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm from Merced. It's full of uh, trash. Marty, you want to pull up some Merced shot, uh, Merced statistics and or pictures? I seem to remember that there was somebody that did end up teaching you Spanish, though, right? Um, the, Like five words. So I know this sounds really fucking stupid, guys. And this is episode one. We'll have more time to get to know each other. All right. My mom. My mom's mom is Jewish. My grandma's Jewish, uh, Pol- Pol- she's like, family's from Poland, they, they, they're they Jew, they're, whatever the fuck you want to say, they're Jewish, we try to do Hanukkah, and I'm, all that shit, right? But my mom's dad is my, my grandpa Tom, he's from Texas, and he's Spaniard, so he's like a, he looks just like, Ch- like, uh, oh, fuck, what's his name, Chonch? Come on, Marty, come on, what's his name from fucking Chips? Punch. Er- punch. Eric Estrada Punch. Sign not Chonch. That's your cousin, Chonch. Um, 
yeah, he, my grandpa looks just like Eric Estrada. My grandpa was a good looking ass motherfucker, man. And um, my grandma was Jewish and that's, they had my mom, right? So my mom is a whiter looking Mexican lady, but she's very light skinned. All my life, my mom says, you join a gang, I fucking kill you. You hit your girlfriend, I will fucking stab you. If you sag your pants, I'll break your fucking leg. My mom's a dick, but she got me on the right path. If not, I would have been a fucking little gangbanging piece of shit. Totally, I'm, I love her for doing that to me. Anyway, my mom's anti-gang and decided to marry a fucking white supremacist. Standard. What? the fuck i know it sounds so stupid right yeah right your mom married a white supremacist mexican jewish lady bro those five to six years of my life were a roller coaster of learning all right i just had to learn all of the these cultural differences and getting stared at at the gas station because my stepdad's completely fucking tatted and all I, I can't get into all the tattoos, but he did have white is right going all the way down his fucking leg. And I remember I asked him and he goes, it's just from prison. And that's when he explained to me racism in prison, racism out of prison. Because my best friend was black. My fucking best friend was black and his dad was a share, uh, the top like buffest cop in our town. And he knew my stepdad from them being, he was a criminal. My stepdad was a, oh, I didn't say that. My stepdad was a criminal. My mom, first time I ever met him, he had hair down to his, to his uh, like back of his knees. And he was showing me a hacky sack with no shirt. And overalls, so I don't think he had much to do that day. You know? Sounds like an episode of Ozark. <laughs> you know, he, he didn't have much. To do. Ozark, yo, no, my stepdad was mad, mad smart, like unbelievably smart. He has a lot of degrees and a lot of felonies. So when he tried to be a teacher, they told him, "Bro, it's not gonna happen. You've done a lot of ugh, thirty-one rapes in Merced." Sorry, just pull that up. Like, oh my god. Sorry, if you guys didn't, I just talked about my stepdad and then just go, rape? Sorry, <laughs> Marty pulled up his graph. I'm going to overlay these graphics. <laughs> he, he pulled, I hope you do. <laughs> he pulled up this graphic and Merced just sucks, man. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, my stepdad knew fluent Spanish because I can't get into fully everything, but he did crazy shit in prison. He told me a lot of wild shit. When my mom and him started getting divorced and I started getting older, I was like 12 or 13, he like started telling me more. And the shit he told me made me like, I live with you. You're capable of this crazy shit, fool. I sleep with my door unlocked. What the fuck? Anyway, um, he spoke fluent Spanish and he tried to teach me some words because I didn't know any Spanish. So I want you to wonder years yourself out of this situation. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? Back up and look what, over. What, what you do? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine little fat fucking brown kid and buff as fuck stepdad. I almost said his damn name. Oof. It's a TV show. Yeah, buff, oh, as, buff as fuck stepdad rocked the fuck out with lightning bolts and white is right and fucking. What was it? Uh, what were those? Vikings. That's what got us kicked out of Disneyland. Uh, we didn't even make it in. We were in the line. They told us we had to leave. Because um, he shaved his head one day and he has his whole head tatted. It's all racist shit. Anyway, um, he's sitting there trying to teach me Spanish words. And I remember thinking, my dad is not trying to teach me Spanish. And this white supremacist motherfucker that's basically my dad. I started calling him my dad toward the end. Because my dad was not around. He was on drugs, even though he was a cool motherfucker. He didn't show up to any of my shit. I was a captain of the fucking football team. Fucking won gold uh, medals in wrestling. He didn't show up for shit unless it was for sports. He would, like, say I had 15 games. He showed up for one. And I remember at it's a long story now that i'm thinking about like god that's sad <laughs> jesus christ but um so my stepdad was always there that was like my dad he was teaching me like rules of this uh if you see anybody flash this kind of hand sign you do not talk to him you go away you do this you don't he was trying to show me all the gang life to stay the fuck out of it he always used to tell me you're too fucking nice to go to jail never go to jail he always said if I ever find out you're doing drugs, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. Not like a dad beats a kid. I'm going to beat your fucking ass. And I remember I was about 12 when he said that. And I thought, well, I guess I'm not doing drugs because you're going to beat the fuck out of me. Because I'm never going to be beat your ass. You're a monster. And um, then he got hooked on meth. And my mom just stopped being married to him. 
That was it, guys. Everybody preaching all this shit, not leading by example. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Good thing I had the same brain as a child. <laughs> as a kid, I've been thinking the same way. People irritate me. Get the fuck away from me. I don't like you. And I, I was always right. They always ended up being a creep. But he taught me Spanish. My mom taught me how to throw a football. My dad taught me uh, cool movies from the 90s. I think that was it. It's valuable. If it is, I mean, Rambo for his blood, Terminator 1, those are deep. Those are deeply ingrained movies in my brain, man. Um, yeah, so that's Merced. I grew up around that. <laughs> and uh, I don't speak Spanish, so everybody used to fuck with me because I'm in a primarily Mexican town. Everybody used to talk shit to me at the flea markets. I was always getting shunned, and I didn't give a fuck. I was sitting there just playing football and trying to get good grades, and that was me as a little kid. And then later on, I just started selling weed. About 15, I started selling fucking mass amounts of weed with my homies, planting sacks on the night, the Sunday. If it was Monday, we'd go on Sunday, plant all of our sack, 10 sacks, dubs are on this side. It's under this bush. It's by this. It's in this drain pipe. It's by this piece of wood at the wood shop. So at lunch... We go, what do you need, 20? Be right back. And I'd walk to the certain spot where I had 20s, make sure no one's there, grab one, come out. Me and Joe, my friend, my best friend, he was my best friend, Joe Fish. The first time we started selling weed, uh, one lunch period, we sold an entire ounce. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but 28 sales, basically, like a gram, you know what I mean, was 20 bucks back then. We made almost $500, maybe a little over, and we didn't have money. It's so, like a sale every other minute. Yeah, no, dude. We were selling a sack, and every three minutes, they, that person would bring somebody back. Like, yo, this is the guy right here. Like, what do you want? Let me get your money. All right, cool. You know how many ones and fives I've taken for 10 sacks? It's unbelievable, dude. It is crazy. Um, the 10 sacks were point fours. If like, yo, what about point five? You have a gram for 20. I'm like, oh, sorry, if you want 20, you got to buy the whole gram. If you want, <laughs> if you want a 10 sack, it's, it's going to be the point four. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Merced. It's Merced. Uh, if anybody found out who... No, you can't tell on somebody selling weed because then the weed connect's gone. You're going to be shunned. No. No, no one's paying attention. No one's paying... Well, it was me and Joe. I did, what, 12, 15? Joe sold all the girls because he's super pretty. So he would just sell all the girls, bam, just like that. My homie was mad pretty. Then he fucked it all up. But uh, yeah, he would sell to all the chicks. He would always fucking skimp them. I would sell to all the fucking dudes I knew. I, there was a time in 10th grade where I would walk up to, you know, the groups. The jack kids. Oh, the water polo kids. Oh, these kids. We're a Mexican town, so the water polo kids are the only white kids. You know what I'm saying? The only white kids are the one Mexican kid that just, that, that just happened to join the team and he's friends with them. That's... Pretty much how my town is, unless you go across town, Golden Valley, and that's where all the white kids go to school. Because Merced High, where I went, is the ghetto-ass school. So, unless you want your daughter pregnant, don't go to Merced High, basically. And, uh, yeah, I just started selling weed like that, guys. I know it's a long origin story, but at least it's not like fucking Wolverine. It's all sad. My little brother cried when Wolverine died. <laughs> no, no, it's more like 300. He went off into the tundra and sold his own packs at lunch. Yo, dude. Yesterday, I was thinking of stuff of three. I was thinking of a quote from Three Hundred, and I started doing that voice in my head, Marty. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I wish I could have someone narrate my life like that. Oh, and he got the other cheese. Oh, he put that one. Down. That one looks processed. Yo, just me at the grocery store. Certainly not vegan. Yeah, not vegan cheese. Don't touch it. I, oh yeah, I know I'm super fat. I don't eat meat or cheese. I'm vegan for a, a long time. Um, I used to be fatter. Because everybody asks, you're still fat. Like, bro, trust me, <laughs> I was a lot worse than this before I stopped. So, yeah, that, that'll be a, a thing, uh, a common talking term is, man, we make some, my girlfriend Rosie makes some super sick shit. I love Pinterest. You can make meatloaf out of beans and lentils. I don't know if you knew that. And carrots and onions. Yeah, it's fucking bomb. Um, so, yeah, that's Merced. I started selling hella weed. I moved out, started selling a lot more weed. After high school, I started selling packs, and I started taking trips to get packs and to going to Santa Cruz and getting 20-pack. Coming back, and it's all gone. Uh, my homie, well, oh, let's just say his name's John. Let's keep it John. 
from uh, I, do, I do these things called story times, if you don't know. And I just tell a few stories, sit down for 30 minutes, smoke weed. It's my number one asked for thing on YouTube. And uh, I love it. It's my favorite thing to do, just talk. It's just talking, having fun, telling stories about... I've been through some crazy shit, man. I've almost been killed. I've almost been fucking... I've almost been killed. I've almost accidentally killed people. I've almost gone to prison. I've almost... Uh, uh, there's so much I still haven't talked about on my YouTube. Because like I said, I do story time. I'm in season three. All right? I'm in season three of this shit. And um, let's just call him John. John used to be one of my dealers. He was my... The... All right, now, now that I know, he was the best connect with the worst habits. The coolest connect, the dopest one with the worst fucking mindset ever. Nicest guy, super cool. One of the funniest people I know. Only person I know that could freestyle for three or four minutes nonstop, just high, and not make me cringe. And I'm not like, oh, bro, that was terrible. Yo, you're really good at this. You should do this more often. One of my, I love the guy. Anyway, long story short, he disappeared. Um... I never really got into it, but I, uh, about almost two years ago, I pretty much came to terms he's dead because this has been a, a almost nine years he's been missing. And there's just, there, I just don't see a chance of him being alive still because they did. I never talked about it a lot, but they found his fucking dog shot in the head uh, on the road leading outside by the hospital. Long story short, he owed somebody money. He got robbed. I told him it was going to be good because I owed him like 20 fucking racks because he gave me so many packs. And then he never answered his phone again. I remember I, I, last time I talked to him, he said, oh, I just got fucking robbed. I'm like, what are you talking about? I could tell he was off the fucking oxys. I can tell on, in his voice. His, if you know people that do pills, you, you can hear it in their voice. <laughs> it gets a little more dry. Like, I hate that fucking voice. And, uh, I just got fucking robbed. I'm like, what do you mean you just got fucking robbed? Who are you with? Where are you? I'm at a party. You go, you're at a party with a 40 pack? I am going to punch you in the face. A 40 pack is, means 40 pounds of weed. A pack is one pound. Brought a 40 pack to meet a guy at a party on Oxys. Didn't get punched. Nothing. Full pass the fuck out in one of the rooms. Somebody walked in, took the bag and left. He has no. He had no idea who it was. I can hear the panic in his voice. I'm like, yo, it's going to be cool. I got 20 bands for you right now. You were supposed to meet me tonight, but you're at a party, obviously. And uh, last time I ever talked to him, that was it. He told me, I'm with Joe. Joe, my friend Joe, my, my, my old best friend. And that was it, guys. Disappeared. I hung out with that guy almost every fucking day. Disappeared. Wanted uh, missing poster signs from his mom, his brother. His other brothers were my other best friends. You'll hear a lot more about him. You'll hear a lot about Ryan. Um, this was Ryan's older brother. Uh, let's call him John. Yeah, he's still missing, guys. He went missing when I was like 22. Really sad. But uh, yeah, I started got I got to connect with him. I started pushing so much fucking weed out of my house. It got weird. It got to the point where I started getting scared. Like, I, I could potentially get my door kicked in. I'm selling a lot of fucking weed. There's so much foot traffic. But the best part about it is I lose my first apartment. I lived above the maintenance worker. And I noticed about day two that the maintenance worker sells fucking uh, Chris. Sells uh, meth. Because there kept tweakers kept coming by. <laughs> and I was thinking, fuck, dude, there's so much foot traffic coming in here. They're going to know I'm selling something. And then when I started realizing, like, yo, these tweakers are coming in and out. You're selling meth. You're the fucking um, janitor, basically. The gate, the groundskeeper of the apartment. That was the guy. He lived under me. And yeah, dude. Sure enough, I realized he's selling meth. I said, no, no, no. Come. Come to the door, bro. I'll serve you at the door. It doesn't matter because this motherfucker's selling meth below me. Ain't nobody saying shit. If he's not in jail, I ain't going to fucking jail. And he's not calling the cops on me. Um, best cover I ever had. Best cover ever. So that's Merced. That's what happened. Guys started selling weed, mass amounts of weed. And that leads me up to, like I said, um, I got a iPhone. I mean, I got a smartphone, posted on Instagram, started posting weed. My account started taking off and I had to stop selling weed. My, Merced's a small town. So I stopped selling weed because you either sell weed and you shut the fuck up and don't let nobody know. Or you're on the internet smoking weed, doing crazy shit. And you go to jail because you still sell weed. So I decided to take 
a different route and just stop selling weed. I got another job to try to help out with fucking bills. This is before I started the clothing company. So I had no money. <laughs> I stopped selling weed. That was very fucking luke. Let's just say it was very lucrative. A little I've made I made a million dollars before I was fucking 20 years old and I I literally have nothing to show for it. Don't give kids money. Don't let kids with money is just <laughs> somebody else is going to get rich. That kid's not staying rich. I'll just say that. No, there's no doubt in my mind that I've made I made that before I a hundred percent. I'm selling that much weight every fucking day. This is back when eighths were fifty five dollars, quarters are hundred and ten. Don't even ask me about the ounce because you don't want to pay it. That's those days, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, when I was taxing thirty dollars a half fucking eighth. I feel bad now, but that's that's what I was charging, man. My weed was fired from John. John was getting it straight from Humble Blue Dot. Uh he was getting blue dot, blue dream. OG, he always call it the Kush, the Kush. He never called it OG or true. He just called it the Kush. And that was always more expensive. The perp, the dark perp, the hardball perp, GDPs, the regular perp, China perps. Um, I was getting everything from him. Blue dot was a big one. Um, this is before cookies even came out, before Girl Scout cookies came out for all those gelatos. This is pre all of that shit. So there was not much to choose from, but they were all fire, man. That's why I remember Chem, Chem Dog too. Anyway, that brings me up to that. I stopped, stopped selling weed, started making weed content, and here we are. That's my long-ass story. That's where we're at, and that's where I grew up. And let me um, introduce – I know we introduced Marty, but I want – this is a team. This is a team show. It's not just me, all right? Marty's over here doing all the cam work, doing everything. Marty is not from California. Marty's from cold-ass Buffalo. And just to tell you a little bit about Marty, he's really nice. He's really professional. Marty used to also walk around with a screwdriver. Marty, uh, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Not the intro I was expecting. But, <laughs> That's the best but... intro ever. Oh, he's so professional and nice. Also used to carry a screwdriver for protection. So continue. Yeah, man. It was a long road out to here to beautiful SoCal. And we're on top now, but it wasn't always so nice. So you're from Buffalo, New York. Yeah, man. The only it's thing I know about Buffalo week. is is Big Daddy. Where are you from? Buffalo. Uh -huh, That's yeah. all I know about Buffalo. Uh, what about uh, Bruce Almighty? Right? That's in Buffalo? <laughs> yeah. Well, Bro, I did not know that. They said it was. It wasn't, actually. <laughs> I had no idea. No, that was in Studio City. Yeah, man. It was, you know. So what's up? Where are you from? You're from Buffalo? You grew up there your whole life? What's what's going on? Let yeah, everybody know yeah. what's going on. Yeah, man. Grew up through the four consecutive you know, loop Super Bowl losses. Oh, and God. going through this past week has been awfully traumatic. <laughs> oh, yeah. So just for timing, yeah. let me cut Marty real quick. I'm a Packer fan since I was a kid. Marty's a diehard Bills fan. And both our teams just got kicked out of the fucking Super Bowl. We were real optimistic for the we test were, run podcast. Yeah, we did a test week. run last week. And we're like, yeah, I wonder who's going to make it. And it's Sunday <laughs> night. We're both like, so I guess mm. the stress is off because we yeah. don't have to worry anymore. It was stressful. I it know. was stressful, man. I was sitting there like, I just want the Bills to not lose. And they fucking got smashed. The Packers got fucking murdered. Yeah, I'm just glad we got our ass beat and it wasn't close. It wasn't like a fluke. We didn't get screwed over. They just beat our ass fair and square, so I'm yeah, okay with 100%. that. Yeah, 100%. Exactly. I'm okay with it, Tom Brady, you motherfucker. You're so damn good at this. But like you're saying, though, it did remind me how much, like, I, I, I felt that hometown pride for the first time in a long, long time, time seeing us do that. And a lot of great things have been coming on Buffalo this year, so I'm really happy boom, to see boom, that. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> that's all i know about buffalo is griselda uh -huh. and the bills yep. and marty <laughs> yeah there we are you know that's it that's fine um so no 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 don't don't go around it why did you just carry a screwdriver yeah well i mean shit it was uh oh wait a screw yeah no what you're talking about is from yeah particular this big ass screw i used to carry around in my pocket <laughs> yeah i mean there's all kinds of shit hold on hold on i know and you used to there was a handle on it uh, yeah, yeah. Yo, so don't leave you, it out. No, don't leave it out. Yeah, no, it was just, it was a step, but it was a poor man's brass knuckles is what we're talking about. It was a big ass screw from Home Depot or some shit. I could see in a you too site. in that tall ass white tall T, straight build hat, the ready dickies. to punch somebody in the fucking yeah. face. Yeah, that, you, you nailed it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I love it, dude. No, keep going in. Marty, what, what brought you out here? Uh, for everybody at home, what brought you to California? Because you've mm -hmm. told me the story. The story is quite fucking epic. I, it's mm -hmm. There's no way around it. It's just fucking epic. Man, it was really just a mission to get out of Buffalo and to get out here 
at the time it was all based around music. My, my, you know, like we talked about my real passions in life were basketball and the music. I ended up waging this campaign and making a, the move out here through music and you know my business graphic design and drastic graphics hold up that. don't be skimming don't be skimming I gotta say yeah, this for yeah, Marty yeah, Marty's yeah. never gonna say the cool shit try to he's gonna think he's gonna sound like a jerk you don't sound like a jerk Marty almost got a fucking damn record deal that's why Marty yeah, moved yeah. out here say it yeah, yeah, people need to little, know people need to know <laughs> it was a, a, a strong marathon with the music for a long time I ended up getting a deal with DJ Ski and then you know I, I moved out here over that and then after, you know, I, it was probably about a year that I really kept going with music hard before I saw my opportunities with, within podcasting and comedy and just, then just really just slammed down drastic graphics full time and, and completely fell back from music. And so, I mean, it's really come full circle now, though, because music's a huge part of my life with all the video I work on. Yeah. Oh, Marty, uh, for every, all the fans out there, all the YouTube videos are edited by Marty. All that crazy, dope, fucking wild ass edits. That's all this guy right here. And that computer right there. Yep. Yeah. It's like, wow. It's kind of cool to think about that way. Um, so you came out here, started doing the graphics, and you started doing podcasting. So basically, mm -hmm. Marty started working with Brian Callen and Brandon Schaub. Yep. Right? Yep. And that's how you got your start. And then you started working with other people. Go ahead and mm -hmm. take it away. Yeah. At the, at the beginning of the Fighter and the Kid, when you know Rogan was really at his peak and putting on all his friends with their different podcasts... I was able to get in on the ground floor of that and then kind of grow my business through the comedians and the, the podcast community, really, through Rogan and Theo and Josh Wolf, Sickler, Dove Davidoff, bun a, bunch of the, a bunch of the comics. And, it, you know, really just put me in this position in podcasting now, six, seven years into it, where, you know, me and my associates and people I work with, it's kind of like how we say, like, in the music industry in the 90s, like, the A&Rs and the execs, all the people that kind of ran the industry. I kind yeah. of feel like that's what's going on in podcasting right now. Yes, yes, yes. You're getting the talent. Walk in, walk out, we got the rest. That's mm -hmm. really what it is. Who can make it work? And that's pretty much what you do. For a long time, for, you know, thousands of episodes is the idea. Because it's easy to be hot quick. It's easy to come out hot. It's easy to have 100 good episodes, but... Episode six, seven hundred, a thousand. Damn. That's, yeah. Bet you the other podcasts you work on don't get care packages dropped in three to four times an episode. They sure the fuck they don't. They sure don't. Care package sponsored by us. Once again, what the fuck? <laughs> there's a war going on, man. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but that's a like third fucking helicopter, and there's never helicopters. So, so Marty, that's why... uh. Marty hit me up about a year ago. That's how we connected because mm -hmm. I talked about I wanted to do a podcast. I posted on my Instagram. I did not know of Marty. Then uh, hit me up, says, hey, I can help you with the podcast. Start talking. Turns out Marty filmed a piece of one of my videos like six years ago. I was at this weed like content party thing and we were filming this video and Marty hap so happened to randomly be, there. randomly be there for something completely different and then he started following me since that night he said so I started following seeing what you're doing I like what you're doing then he said I saw you talking about podcasts right up my alley mm -hmm. and that made me stoke like okay you could have hit me up at any time in these six years but you waited till you're like no 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 I can actually do that and I think it's a good idea mm -hmm. that's when it's like because I hate when people are like oh I can help you do this 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 I'm like no there's not enough time in the day for you to help me do this this and this and this there's motherfucker just, there's just this, I've only gotten that feeling a couple times in life it was when I remember it distinctively like when I knew like oh you should hit up fighter with the kid this is about to be this is about to be big you should hit them up yeah it was one of those moments every once in a while they happen and it's like moment inspiration like nah you know what you gotta do you can look into the future and see what it could be in a second and then just a, a bunch of a bunch of opportunities have come to fruition like that for me yeah dude when it works it works um, so that's how we got together, guys, and we've just been working on stuff since then. And it's it's a testament to the fans how long it took to get this up and running. A year. Over because a year, guys. We talked about this. We posted coming soon 11 months ago, mm -hmm. and then COVID started. Mm -hmm. But you didn't half-ass it. We could have no, very easily We could have half-assed half it. it and just did it, not had a set, had a get fucking sheet behind me, and just talked and go, hey, I got a lot of followers. You guys better watch. Now, fuck. That shit. I would love it if the first episode it was all fans or all people that don't even know who we are. Mm -hmm. That would be bomb. If I can capture those 
brains and those that attention of the people that don't even know who we are just to talk and hang out and have fun and it's gonna get wild on here i haven't even started really talking about any of the crazy shit and that's what i love i love watching interviews i love that shit we're gonna have our first guest in a couple days i'm very fucking excited might tell you who i'm really excited super funny comedian and I'm ready to get fucked up with this guy. <laughs> That's really, I'm ready to get fucked up. We, I don't know, we might drink, we might eat some mushrooms, we never know. We, we, It's fun. Like I said, here we talk about life, accomplishment, drugs, and everything in between. So drugs is a big part of that shit. Um, drugs was my best friend. I don't care what kind of drugs, as long as it was fun. But uh, drugs will kill you, so don't do that. Just smoke weed. I'm going to light this motherfucking joint. You think Conor McGregor is on drugs? Cocaine. I think all fighters do fucking rails and then walk in and start fighting. How could you not? How could you not? Because I know me. When I did cocaine, I'm not a violent person. I'm not aggressive. I could probably fight a lot longer when I was doing massive amounts of coke. Just to get through the fear. Just to... Nah. I don't know. Did you ever wrestle or anything like that, Marty? Uh, like not, for school? I, I mean, I've done like a lot of kickboxing, like conditioning oh, and stuff, but not like <laughs> wrestling for school. Okay. Have you ever uh, done an uh, individual sport? Against somebody like for school or city, just basketball. I mean. Just basketball. Okay, yeah. that's different. Yeah, teammates. Um, because when you said the fear, the yeah, fear's not really different. there. Totally, it's the blankness. Like when I used to wrestle, I took that shit serious, and no matter how many moves and this and all this shit, I was ready to fuck with. The second they go, okay, go, I go, fuck, dude. What was I gonna do yeah. again? And then I'm just kind of like, get off of me, get the fuck yeah. off of me. All the that whole preparation time, all is that, gone. Everything's and... gone, dude. Yeah. There, when it when it comes to adrenaline, everything is wiped clean. You go, yo, don't let this fool put you on your back. Ah, oh, fuck, I lost. That's pretty much how my wrestling went for the first two years because I was fat and mm -hmm. short, so I was always in heavyweights, even when I was like in sixth grade. I, I was going to get in jiu-jitsu. I really wanted to when I was heavy doing the kickboxing. But even then, pre-COVID, it just I just can't be all on other dudes, all sweaty and shit. It's it, just not for me. See, that for me, it's it's more of I don't think about that when it's serious. When it's serious, yeah. I don't give a fuck if you're pissing your pants. Well, I'm going to yeah, pin no, your ass. Optional, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm a if fucking it's germ freak. Like, I can't just. Uh, bro, let, <laughs> that's your. Can we teach well, I mean, me if it's optional. <laughs> Yeah, if it was an option, I'm like, yo, can we just like wear full shirts? Uh -huh. Do I have to have my fucking uh, spaghetti straps and then just fucking go bump chest with this guy? And uh, my sister wrestled too, dude. And my oh, sister was God. big. Uh, she she was like five seven, five eight in fifth grade. She just grew her full. So I always got my ass whooped as kids, as a kid. She mm -hmm. beat the fuck out of me. Mm -hmm. But when she wrestled, dude. She would fuck people up. And when it comes to wrestling and you're in sixth, seventh grade, you don't yeah. want to wrestle the girl. You feel weird. You're like, oh, oh I don't God. want to hurt the girl. Because no. when you're a kid, you don't learn yet that, no, 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 no. Girls are wrestlers too. You better try because she's going to mm -hmm. fuck you up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're in sixth grade. No one taught you that yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. You didn't. You didn't, unless you wrestled for, for the city, you didn't wrestle yet. Sixth grade was the first time you wrestled for us. You know what I mean? You don't have that in fifth grade. So when I remember. My sister went up for her first match, and I was thinking, well, she beats the fuck out of me. I hope she fucks this fool up. I mean, she fucked <laughs> this kid up so violently. And I thought, yo, that was, that's was that been me. That's been me for 13 years. <laughs> She's been doing that shit to me. Now uh -huh. everybody else gets to feel it. Uh -huh. That guy was 6'1". I am yeah. I, I was 4'8", dude, uh -huh. in eighth grade. You felt justified. Yeah, I felt like, all right. That fucking yep, pool. and then ninth yeah. grade came, and my, my first time I ever beat my sister's ass. I fucked her shit up last time she ever tried to fucking play me like that. Mm. Ooh, she, I think she realized, like, wait, oh, you're strong now? Like, yeah, bitch. What are we talking about? Are you, did you, like, do an ankle pick? And no. Um, and what are we, so, you know, let's down? get into this story real quick. Let's get into this. My sister's a fucking dickhead to me all my whole life growing up. We're cool now, but she was a fucking asshole because my mom would always beat her ass she was always grounded because my sister has a smart ass mouth she don't give a fuck about authority and she talks shit to my mom my mom is joe pesci don't fuck with my mom she's a dickhead too but i was very nice and polite because my mom's mean so as soon as my mom we got done beating my sister's ass for being a dumbass and i would tell her yo stop she's gonna come in here and fuck you up as soon as my mom leaves the room my sister beat my ass because she was mad that i didn't get beat up or i didn't get spanked but it's like yo bitch I didn't do anything, you dickhead. You, all right, I'm going to get my ass whooped again. So I got my ass whooped all the time, 
all the fucking time. <laughs> and I was the smallest. So my mom's a full grown lady. My sister's a, basically a full grown fucking lady. I'm short. I was short as fuck. And then I got my growth spurt in ninth grade randomly and grew like fucking nine inches out of nowhere. But shit, no, more like 12. Yeah, I grew like a fucking foot out of nowhere. And um, it was ninth grade, guys. It's when PlayStation 2s were still here. All right. I had a PlayStation 2. A uh, little backstory, I did not grow up with money. So PlayStation 2 was a big fucking deal to me. It was gold. You, right now, if you can relate to me, you grew up not fucking, you were not rich. We weren't, we used to be way worse when I was younger, but you don't get new clothes all the time. Like, in your school shopping, like, oh, dude, I hope my pants are still okay enough for this year, too. It was like that. We weren't fucking dying poor, but we didn't have money. So when I had that PlayStation 2, actually, I just found the picture of me getting it as a little kid. And uh, I had it for like four years or three years. I had that PlayStation 2. I'm just playing games, man. That's all I'm doing. I got off of school. I'm a freshman. I lived across the street from the school like fucking not another t or uh, like a scary movie one. I lived right across the street from the fucking school. I'm just playing games. That's all I'm doing. Just playing games. My sister's a fucking dickhead. She walks, and I'm not even exaggerating. She walks in, just grabs her remote, changes it, and I go, yo, uh, I'm playing games. I don't fucking care. Oh, you bitch. I just remember feeling like, why are you so mean to me? That's like, I was never like hurt that she made fun of me and all this shit and beat my ass. It was more of, what the fuck did I do to you, bitch? What did I do to you, okay? Why? I'm so I'm so nice, man. So I didn't understand. She turned it off. I went and grabbed the remote. I turned it back. And then she tried to get it from me, and I closed my hand. And when I closed my hand, she looked at me like, I'm going to fucking kill you. That's like a South Park uh, Stan and his sister. Mm -hmm. That's me. I closed my hand and she looked at me. She tried to get it and I just gripped it and she tried to open my hand. And I that's when I realized like, oh, I'm stronger than you now. Oh, it's over. You can't do. And then she tried to fucking punch me and I blocked it. And then she tried to punch me again. And I don't know what happened, dude. I just grabbed her by her leg and her arm and I picked her up over my head and I dipped her. Literally on the, hulked her? I hulked Jeez. her so fucking hard. I mean, I was ninth grade. I was already benching 280, you know, um, squatting three. So I was, you know, I was a little, a little, little buff little fucker, and uh, I dipped her, and then I hear, I can hear the, ah, the air escaping her, ah, and then I can see her trying to catch her breath, and then at this point, dude, it was like, imagine this, imagine this, and like a movie where this little guy is just getting his ass whooped, and then the moment where she, the, the, the villain basically my sister realizes like oh, i can't do it it's like jafar when like and everything that yeah. goes with it and jafar gets sucked in the lamp that was my sister no i have her on her back and i grab her fucking wrist both of them and i'm holding them and she's trying to move and she realizes she can't move her arms and i just push one arm or i grab her wrist put her arm on her chest do it to the other chest and i grab both her wrists like this did your mom teach you this move Exactly. 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 When mom told me not to hit girls or how to stop girls from hitting you, that's exactly what I did, except for the head part. Um, so I have both her hands together and I grip it with one hand and I press all my body weight. So both her hands are under my body weight. She's on her back and I'm looking face to face with her for the first fucking time I've ever winning a fight with her. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, it's over. And I looked at her and said, it's fucking done. You can't do that anymore. It's not get off. And she started screaming at the top of her lungs so loud that it made me scared. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, like, you're you're like, like it Ugh. hurt me. Yeah, it hurt like my ears. So I'm like, oh, bitch. And I didn't get off her. Oh, hell no. She screamed like that. She got like killed. My sister tried to stab me twice before that. Legitimately tried to stab me. Oh, man, I should mention this. This apartment, uh, our wall neighbor, like the neighbor that's touching our wall is my Uncle John and my Aunt Pepper. So my Uncle John and my sister uh, smoke weed together and drink. My Uncle John was like 22. Who my sister was like 16 so um you know they're kind of close in age they just get drunk drink and he would drink after work and he found out she smoked weed like i have weed let's smoke weed my uncle was the man and uh awesome. yeah and he lived next door so he's broken up a few fights because he could hear me screaming for help 
because she used to beat my ass. I'd be screaming for help. He'd come over like, just stop beating his ass. And then, you know, that was it. Excuse me. So my sister's screaming, get off. Get the fuck off. She's screaming at the top of her lungs. And I remember I look at her and I just I like slap her mm. right in the face with my other hand. I pop her and like, oh, I filled up with fucking so much power. Like I just fucking, I Hulkamania just started shaking. Like, oh my God, that was amazing. And I slapped her. I didn't slap her hard, but I was just doing that kind of shit. And I told <laughs> imagine it now, like I see why she was so mad. And for about 15 minutes, I was sitting on her stomach and holding her down and telling her, if I let you up, you can't do anything to me. Cause I know she's crazy. She's she will fucking she'll try to kill me. Legitimately. And uh I'm telling her, like, I'm not gonna let you up. Get the fuck off screaming like screaming into my soul and I'm looking at her and I'm smiling and it's the first time that she can't do anything and I'm like I'm like I said I, I'm sitting there shaking like oh my god yes are you fucking bitch that's all I keep thinking like I'm gonna fuck. like when Ralphie beats the fuck out of the redheaded kid in Christmas story that's how it was I was just like oh you bitch and then I told her I'm gonna let you up I'm gonna fucking go outside don't do anything. Don't. It's over. If I let you up, it's fucking over. Don't. And she doesn't say anything. She's just staring at me. She's just fucking staring at me. Doesn't say anything. I'm like, I'm going to let you up. And I, like, release my hand. I start getting up. She doesn't move. I stand up, and she just looks at me while she gets up, staring right at me. I'm like, oh, no. What did I do? She looks at me, turns around, and just stomps my PlayStation 2. Stomps it into, into fucking pieces. Um, That's shitty. Yeah, so she's sitting there. She gets about two stomps in. Oh, care package. I hope it's a PS2. <laughs> um, she stomps my PlayStation. She gets two stomps in before I realize, like, no! And I, she's only four feet away. We're in a little house apartment. She's four feet away around the coffee table. I start going around the coffee table to stop her, and she gets that third stomp in. And when she does, that thing just splits. It just cracked in. And I looked at it like, oh, my God, what the fuck? And then she immediately, you know, I think I just mixed that up. I'm sorry. Wow, I fucked my own story up. Um, she stopped my PlayStation in before I slammed her. That's why I slammed her. Sorry, I mixed that up. This is where it gets violent. That's right. I wouldn't give her the shit. She wouldn't give me the fucking remote. She swung on me. I pushed her. and She stomped my shit in, so I slammed her on the fucking ground. There. Sorry, I fucked my story. Anyway, she she stopped my PlayStation to pieces, and then I, that's when I put my fucking hand on her chest, and she was, get off me, all that bullshit. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I let her up. She look, She's looking at me. She gets up, and she just calmly, like, calm. She runs, but calmly. No, like, ah! She runs. I go, what? What are you doing? What are you doing? She calmly just goes to the kitchen, comes around with the fucking, the, uh, you know the the bigger kitchen ones from the block, like not the not I the skinny it. bread knives, the thick ones, the Michael Myers the knife. Butcher knife, the butcher knife. There yeah. you go, butcher knife. Thank you. This bitch comes around the corner with it, and I'm like, stop, stop, knock it off. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna tell mom. I'm gonna call mom because my mom's at work. I'm gonna call mom. I was just saying whatever I could because I know she's fucking crazy. She got like three steps from me and swiped, and when she swiped, there was no no holding back. She swiped going for it. I I know when she's trying to scare me. She used to get a knife and just try to fuck with me to scare me. I know when she's not trying to get close and this time she was legitimately she swiped at me with her whole force and then I started screaming. As soon as I she swiped and I went, "Oh my god." And I started screaming, "John!" I just started screaming for like hope to god my uncle can hear me. I'm running around the coffee table. I'm like this. I'm running around the coffee table. I'm just like, "Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god." And then she just steps on the coffee table. I'm like, "Fuck. What the fuck am I going to do?" The coffee table's a foot high. She steps over the coffee table. I grab one of the fucking kitchen chairs. I just put it up. And as I put it up, she's starting to swipe at me and then she's like she does like not a stab, but when the knife's like this, and she swiped at me, and she caught my shirt, and I like felt the tug. I felt the tug Dude, when she caught my shirt, and I was screaming, and that's when I heard "What's going on?" and pounding on the door, my uncle John, and the door was locked, and my sister's between the door, and I'm like, I'm not gonna go unlock the door. She's gonna, she's gonna fucking stab me. But when I put my hand on that lock, 
How am I going to block? This is it. She's going to get one in on me, and I don't want to get stabbed. Like, I'm not even taking one stab. Fuck that. And I hear, doof, doof, doof. And then my Uncle John pops it off the frame. He hits the door God, and the side yeah. of the, you know, the door frame on the side. It's a little cheap apartment. So, yeah. the, you know what I'm saying? You know the little store frame on the side? Yeah. It popped off. And right when he did, I dropped the chair like, oh, my God, he's here. And then right when I did, she fucking took this opportunity upon herself to swipe at me. And when she did, that's when I started, like, backing up the hallway as fast as I could. And my uncle bear hugged her. And when he bear hugged her, he's like, put the fucking knife down. He's bear hugging her. She's looking at me like evil. And I'm looking at her like, bitch, you really went for it this time, huh? Fuck you. And then my Uncle John uh, is holding her. And he's like, get the fuck out of here. He'd look at me like, get the fuck out of here right now. Go to my house. Go to my house. Lock the door. And I went, I walked, I ran past my sister. She has no knife at this point. I'm looking at her and I see my PlayStation just in pieces, man. And I were thinking like, I am not getting a new one. That's it. We're, we're poor bitch. Why'd you have to step? All right, fuck you. And then that was it. And how the fuck did we get on that topic? How do you bounce back from that? I'm now after that happens forever. We share more a room. Enemies, I'm plotting on you. Wait, no, that apartment we had separate rooms. That was the first. I think that was the first time we had separate rooms. Yep, the apartment on. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on. How yeah. old are you guys for this exchange? I'm 13 because I was a year younger than the freshman. So I was 13 because hmm. I, I I've graduated when I was turning Putting seven. I just turned 17. 15. No, I was 14. I was 14 because football season was, yep, because football season was over and I turned, I, uh, my birthday's in September. Yep, I was 14 because I, I turned 14 in freshman year. You see what I'm saying? So I started senior year at 16 and I turned 17 uh -huh. during senior year. Yeah, me too. So yeah, so I was 14. My sister was 16, yeah, or turning 16. She's a year and a half older than me. And um, yeah, that fucking bitch broke my PlayStation, man. I remember that day. I was so sad fucking jerk but yeah that's my sister she was super mean how did we get on that topic i'm not really sure i'm not that was sure a hell of a story that shit is oh, not normal she's by the way. she was a jerk man that was the scariest one though she i mean the time before that she threw a knife and it's almost stuck in the wall right by my fucking face she goddamn kill bill or something like what um, are you doing you gotta start throwing shit back at she had her anger problems man that's it uh that's us Jesus Honestly, I don't Christ. fucking know. I don't fucking know, but I know that was the day. That was the day that I won. Even though I almost died and I screamed for help, that's the day she never, ever fucking tried to play me again. She never swung on me again. She never pushed me, never tried to fucking wrestle me to the ground and punch me and give me fucking dead arms and all this bullshit. Just being a dick for no reason. Elbow room was one of her things. She would just start elbowing me in the car. Who does that? I don't fucking know. Anyway... She's nice now, but when we were kids, whew, it was a fucking fight. It was me with my back against the wall all the time, waiting for my sister to fuck me up. And if I did something wrong, my mom's gonna beat my ass too. So, and my dad wasn't there, so I was just alone, dude. I was so fucking scared as a kid, man. Always gonna get my ass whooped. And then when I get to school, everybody's making fun of me because I was fat. And that's when I got this loud. I got this sharp tongue. I, I I'll cut you down. Dude, I will fucking make you cry in class. I've made kids cry in class by just going in on them, and the whole class is laughing. I won't say names, but I made uh, this guy, this guy I know now, <laughs> I made him cry in math class because <laughs> he tried to make fun of me, and then I turned it into his mom does porn joke, <laughs> and he cried. <laughs> anyway, dude, uh, second grade, I used to get picked on a lot by these group of kids. And that's what really got my smart mouth going because I would shit on them. Like I said, I was a very mature kid even when I was younger. <laughs> even though I was on section, I'd be like, shut up, fool. Your mom used food stamps. And, dude, that breaks people down. But <laughs> my mom used food stamps too <laughs> at that time. I would just say it because, like, I know you do because we do. <laughs> so getting made fun of a lot really helped out. It, I, for all you guys that can relate, getting made fun of will – strengthen your comedy heckler stopping skills like you can shit on people in four fucking seconds and then you just keep going that's why when people talk shit to me on the internet like, i don't care i really don't give a fuck um so yeah that that's what happens i get 
picked on at home and then go go to school and get picked on and then I started shitting on people and um I will tell you one little story this uh this um Indian girl named Susan she was abnormally tall and I was in third grade and I'm in the gifted classes um you're watching Malcolm in the Middle the Krellboins I was in those classes my whole from third or fourth grade and up to high school when I started smoking weed and I realized hey man this is too much work hey can I get out of these classes and then they dropped me <laughs> it was great um she would make fun of me but the, I remember one time she she really burned me and I remember I go I kind of like you more now that you burned me one time I was I, I missed a day of school and I was telling this girl I was I missed a day of, uh, she's like why were you uh not here yesterday I go I opened my mouth to say something. This bitch Susan goes, oh, he got stuck trying to put his pants on. And I just started laughing. I'm like, you fucking bitch. That was funny as fuck. But now it's on. Now now it's over. I'm going to shit on you until you have to make me stop. And I rode the bus with this bitch. And uh, I shit on her for like three days. And she'd always make fun of me. But that time she made me laugh. Like I'm not, I'm not saying I just picked on her because of that. She always made fun of me. That fucking ugly ass girl. And... um. I fucking played her so I, I made fun of her so hard for three days straight that her parents came and they call, called me to the office because she didn't want to come to school anymore because she was afraid that I was gonna make fun of her. I won. I won that inter that that's exchange, learn, dude. Though. That's, that's how you learn, you shit. fucking bitch. I would literally put the window, click those two tabs, put the window down. Hey Susan, your nose is big as fuck. Just say second, little third, fourth graders talking shit. But hey, Susan, you brought this on yourself. Don't make fun of me all, all fucking school year. And then when I start burning, you call your parents. I felt so accomplished. I felt so fucking happy. I didn't feel bad. I felt nothing but accomplishment when I knew that her parents had to drive all the way to the school just to fucking have a t parent teacher conference because this little gratifying. fat kid it is it is dude this little fat kid was burning you so bad you had to tell your mom and dad and she lived in the bomb bomb ass nice ass houses and i remember thinking why are you making fun of me bitch you have a nice ass house what do you got to be mad about and um yeah i just it fueled everything <laughs> like oh a rich ass fucking big nose ass susan got no money to get a fucking nose oh dude i was a little piece of shit uh -huh. but i don't know I'm glad you turned out so nice. Yeah, no, I was super nice, but I was only mean to the people that were mean to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's interesting, though. Like, yeah. that's what it took, perhaps. That's, no, I got made fun of all the time, dude. All the fucking time. I don't speak Spanish. I was a fucking fat kid. Uh, I was poor as shit. Uh, what else? I don't know. It's fucking fat. <laughs> that was what I got all the time. Like, you're fat. Like, I know, bitch. Say some other shit. I know I'm fat, you fuck. Um, but yeah, that's what happened. I, we got into this long ass me bullying some girl story. I know this is a bad. It started with your sister. This it started with my sister. But um, yeah, that's what happened, dude. I was super nice at school until you fucked with me, and then that's how I became such a smart talking motherfucker. I had such a smart mouth as I, a kid. I, man, I hope you realize how psychotic that whole story was. I'm trying to picture my kids in the kitchen swinging. Well, my a bunch mom was at, at each other. my mom was at work. My sister just started doing drugs. Uh, she's a fucking bitch. Uh, she didn't want to admit that she was fully gay. My sister's gay now. She's like, but I think she had those problems of like, I don't know if I am. <laughs> and even me as a kid, like, no, you are. I, I know you are. I, I can see it. I live with you. And then I think when she finally came out, she started being nicer. I think that's what yeah. happened. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, now she can be herself. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Damn, you almost caught the rough end of that one. Yeah, oh, damn, bro, no, no. Bobbed and weaved the way you did. Um, I don't. I think that was the closest I ever got to to her killing or her stabbing. I think so. I don't think there's ever been another time where she almost stabbed me that close. There's been other knife incidents, but that one is where I feared for my life, f fully, fully feared. And then if John didn't show up, it was over. So what was that next morning like? Just I have no idea. This happened all the time. She tried to fucking do shit to me all the time. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that was just a random story. <laughs> Some crazy shit's happened, dude. <laughs> My See, sister I, was I was going to tell you about, like, we, I had, like, an adopted brother, and I'd wake up, and he'd fucking put dirty socks in my face and be like socko and run away and I'd oh for mankind yeah punch that's, him in his tailbone and shit that that's funny the extent of it. Yeah. that's fucking <laughs> awesome <laughs> that's a funny story marty <laughs> uh, 
I remember I'd get up, I'd have to go to summer school, I'd come back, I'd pass out on the couch, I'd ride my bike there and back, I'd be getting ready to play basketball all day. He'd be in the same sock all week. Oh. He'd go to basketball camp. Yeah. Oh. Then, yeah. Yo. Hold on, Marty. Uh-huh. For those of you that can't see Marty, was your stepbrother, or was your adopted brother white? No. What? Not at all. No, we, we look like straight up uh wesley and uh woody harrelson back in the day he wasn't a white guy no i am shocked the only friends i know that do shit like that are white guys i've never had a mexican friend go hey wet willie hey i I fucking poured (laughs) water on you in your sleep like wait yeah what no because i I chill with all white dudes uh when i after like 16 and 18 with like a big group of my homies are all white dudes and uh even they say only white guys do weird shit like that, man. Uh, like, oh, it's the it's the frat boy pranks. mentality, the yeah. sleepover pranks. <laughs> yo, let's put our balls in his. Fa- I remember when someone said that. What if I put my balls in his face? And I remember looked down like, yo, what the fuck did you just uh-huh. say? You gonna you gonna molest this guy in his sleep? It's, it's all I'm hearing. Yeah. Yo, let's put our yeah, our yeah. dick on him. Like, oh, yo, what the fuck's nah. wrong with you? Yeah, but nah. sorry for everybody at home. Like, you're racist. Like, no, I'm just speaking factual terms. Yeah, no, we're breaking down cultural barriers. I'm breaking as uh, white as I am. He was black and he was doing this that's why i'm so, yeah. shocked right now marty <laughs> i that that doesn't line up with me i've never had a i've had a lot of black homies man and not oh the one that talked about the balls was black my homie justin we had a sleepover with this guy john and he just put the dog's balls on john's face and i remember thinking this is rape this is male- This is bestiality. This is weird. It's a couple things. <laughs> yeah, this is bestiality. Weird. I don't want to be a part of it. And uh, that, you know how I felt? <laughs> I'm going to compare it because I sat there and watched him do it, and I didn't wake John up because I thought, all oh, these fools are going to get so mad if I've ruined the prank. And I remember thinking when I saw he woke up and he looked at me, it was the same feeling like in Full Metal Jacket when they're beating Piles' ass with all those soap bars, and his homie comes and looks at him. Ah, and he still hits him. That's how I felt. Yeah. That's how I felt. Like, yo, I just lost my soul. Let them put the dog's balls in his face. I was 12, 13. So I was a child, but still, uh, I remember. Yeah, so I take that back. Justin was black. <laughs> and he's the one that came up with the balls. Uh, but no, just I watched CKY. I watched Jackass. I remember the piss and shit pranks. And I remember thinking, how do these how are you friends mm-hmm. i would have beat your fucking ass uh, yeah i would have your whole night's done if you would have done that shit to me and then my even my white homie's like yeah but that's like white guy shit they do pranks and like slap each other in the dick like don't if you hit me in the balls i'm gonna punch you in the chest what's wrong with you it's just like cultural shit it's just different yeah. <laughs> but thing is both of our instances are n- the both black dudes i know yeah look at us <laughs> I, yeah just with my best homie um your step your adopted brother is it the same brother you told me about all the crazy shit yeah yeah i mean it okay. was just me and him so there yeah there was definitely something. i thought crazy it was your shit. friend oh when you say your brother that's i didn't okay gotcha yeah, 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 yeah i know was, the story now yeah i guess te- technically we would have been cousins but we basically we grew up calling each other brothers and shit you know this it was a basically a Wesley Woody Harrelson thing kind of going on. <laughs> Mario over here playing basketball and rapping, yeah. fucking Duncan. Literally, no, I, <laughs> I, the, I said Duncan. He went uh, 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 maybe a tennis ball <laughs> back in my day. But yo, wait, got to do it. Marty's from the East Coast. I'm from the West. Are you ready? Did you have a game called Butts Up? No. Fuck. All right. Did you have a game where you throw a racquetball or a tennis ball? against the wall and if you don't get the right bounce you got to run to the wall put your hand on it before the other person throws yes Yes. what'd you guys call it handball wall ball wall ball (laughs) (laughs) that is such a whack name wall ball i mean what that's catchy that That sounds like fucking mark Wahlberg's fucking just just started started a different sport this is called this is called wall ball (laughs) no i'm gonna I'm gonna look real mad at the camera, and I'm just gonna smack this ball, against wall this ball. ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. against this wall, <laughs> wall ball. Well, I mean, butts up is kind of whack too. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a that's that kind sounds, of a lame name. Yeah, butts up is because. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Because if you get the ball and it hits the wall first, you got to go put your fucking butt out. You know what I mean? And put it against the wall, and they get to throw the ball at you. Is that how you play? 
Yeah, so you guys took it to a whole nother level. Oh, we took it to the extreme. Wall ball is real clear. Butts up is like... you. I know, but wall ball sounds like fucking... <laughs> Yo, p- this is a podcast. <laughs> We're over here. Wall ball, wall burgers. <laughs> so, hey, guys. This is what happens when you're fucking an eighth deep of this fucking OG, I guess. Uh-huh. And we're smoking. Where Have we been smoking today? Yeah, I've been smoking bowls today. It's been a long day. So I had to think back what the fuck I did today. It's been a long motherfucking day. Oh, that soothing rain. Yeah, that's nice. We might, might, might want to uh, add that shit in. Yeah, but if you're driving, I'm sorry to make you sleepy. Um, So, yes, did you have a game called uh, Quarters where you... Put your hand, you put your knuckles on the on the table. Yeah. 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 Stupid dumbass game. Weird, hey, let's spread blood like, between each other. Yeah. How did these things pick up before? Bro, the I'll internet? Tell you, you want AIDS? Do you want a fucking blood transfusion? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're getting everything. Quarters, the dirty, especially when people use change. We, and there were, we moved on to nickels too. Was invented? Yeah. And we moved on to nickels because they were thicker. Did you play bloody knuckles? Yeah, that was the thing. Yep. Yeah, I don't have big knuckles. Fuck that game. Yeah. Um, no, I had pussy knuckles till I started hitting heavy bag. <laughs> I like the way you said. <laughs> my, yeah, my. Uh, was, yeah, my knuckles were pretty bitch made before <laughs> I started hitting the bag. <laughs> I didn't realize. Yeah, you can you can toughen them up. I didn't I didn't realize. Like, you look at these UFC fighters; they just are blasting. You know, That's heavy different. Bag and shit. That's like, different. I, when you see John, when I saw John Clav Van Dam kick a tree over in that movie when I was a kid, uh-huh. that's when I realized. I cannot beat these people in fights. No matter how big and strong I am, there's a little Thai dude that's going to fucking cross kick me, yep. knock me straight to sleep, ruin my whole fucking Invisalign procedure, mm-hmm. fuck all my back teeth up, piss me off, split my lip, and then he's going to go, yeah, I'm 4'9", and I just kicked you in the face. I've seen the Thai fighters, the Thai kickboxers. And he's 11 at the same time. <laughs> and he's 11. <laughs> he's Tony Ja. He's an eleven-year-old Tony Jaw that just beat up a group of grown men. Nah, bro, I don't fuck with that shit. Those monks and those Tie Fighters are serious. They're out there kicking trees down. I'm not gonna kick a tree down. I don't even want to hit my shin with a fucking razor scooter. The most gangster American is not kicking down a banana tree. A the most gangster. There you go. The toughest American is like the toughest American fighter is like a. Ah, he's pretty good in Russia. That's what I was just going to say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Russians, are, those motherfuckers are bricks of humans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cold. Do you want to fight? <laughs> like, yeah, dude, yeah, like, yeah. hey, it's cold. I, you know what's on today? Yo, the new Curb Your Enthusiasm drops today. I ain't trying to fight. That's America. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were talking about Hulk Hogan and proud of being America <laughs> earlier. Now I'm over here shitting on the Americans. Uh-huh. I'm only speaking the truth. Your local um, Call of Duty partner does not do active push-ups let's just say that your average your average male under 30 right now can't do five pull-ups i can't and that's one of i'm just say, speaking the truth i only got like two friends that can do pull-ups man and i have some i have a, quite a bit of friends pull-ups are hard as fuck though i feel like i love that fit. pull-ups are hard they're unnecessarily hard yeah, Fuck I know. This. Pull, pull ups ruin my Ready? confidence. Ready? I'm going to say it right now, Marty. By episode 100, I'll do a pull up. Ready? Uh, mm-hmm. By episode 100 on this podcast, I will be able to do a pull up because I got my shit set up. About to order this treadmill. I hear Marty's doubt in his <laughs> silence. I <laughs> hear doubt. These, these are good goals. This is a modest, humble goal. I, <laughs> all right, I can get behind that. Listen, we got the, we got the, the uh, big industrial shelving units here. We got everything practice. here, man. I used to be a little fucking monster when I was in shape. Before I got a car and started selling weed, uh-huh. oh, man, I was in shape because I had to run everywhere and I had no money to go buy stuff. So I just ran everywhere and just chilled my friends. Mm. Sorry, guys. I had to drink some water. Um, so let's get back a little bit on topic, guys. Um, that was a long rant, but let's get into this current shit. Let's get into what's going on. Just so you guys can, um, if you're like me, let's just put it this way. If you're like me, you don't know what's going on in the news, politics. What What is it? Three to four months ago, someone finally told me the difference between Republican and Democrat. I didn't know. I just know Republicans are usually the old white racist guys. I Right? Am I wrong? As, as far as I know, everybody in politics is old white racist guys. I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> 
to <laughs> confirm this work. That's the best response you could have gave me, man. Okay, Republicans are usually in big lifted trucks, and they might call me a spick. But I'm only generalizing. I'm not saying everyone. That's what I'm. Republicans are what I'm seeing are usually like the southern states, and they wear MAGA hats, right? That's I usually picture, what I, I see. I picture a Republican as your alter ego, where you're like. <laughs> I, I want to live in a neighborhood where they hate me because I'm not white. <laughs> Yo, no, my saying? goal in life, I told Rosie, my goal, listen to me right now, guys. Bernie Mac, America, listen, listen up, America. Hold on. The boy. <laughs> sorry, I had to do it. It's episode one. Oh, sorry, this way. Something ain't right. So that was my Bernie Mac. All right, here we go. Oh, God, I'm so off topic. Sorry, think about Bernie Mac. <laughs> Sorry, I just finished the series again. Um, my politics are so fucked. Somebody just uh, described what, or gave me the description of a Republican and a Democrat. What the gist? What I see most Republicans, it's the red, right? They rap bloods. Republicans are bloods. And uh, they're usually Southern white dudes with MAGA hats. And I'm only generalizing because I have no, I'm ignorant. Remember that. If you get mad, you're ignorant because I'm letting you know I'm fucking ignorant. Mm. And Democrats are usually like the people that you see World Star post. Does that does that make sense? When World Star posts like new check this out, this new senator, they're usually Democrats. That's how I put it. Democrats are people from California, right? Is that is that how we could say this? I the guy the guy gave me the the precise description. People are bashing their faces off yeah, things right now. And I still have no idea because I don't give a fuck. I don't. That's whoever's important. being nice and whoever's for the good of the greater good of people, yeah, I'm with it. I have no I have no knowledge of politics because I don't I don't dwell. I don't dwell, uh uh fiddle with politics, guys. I don't know. I just learned the judicial system and shit. A, B, C, D on my tests for high school, and I left. I know a lot about art history. Uh, art history, I took like three years of it because it was an elective, and my teacher was cool. So um, <clears throat> that's politics. So, yeah, I don't know anything about it, and I'll give you a little story. 2000, what, 14? When the fuck, or 16 when Donald Trump became president? I didn't know it was real. It was a couple days before they did the debate. I didn't know that he was actually running for president. I saw the shit online. I thought they were, I thought it was a meme. I didn't know that it was real until right before the debate. Do you hear what I'm saying? I think I tweeted it. Is this real? Donald Trump's running for president? Hell of people. He's the elect, he's the, he got elected to be one of the fucking candidates. And I'm sitting there like, yo. Is this the same Donald Trump that we're all... What? So that's me, guys. I don't pay attention to the news. I don't watch any of that shit. <clears throat> it's stressful. I don't like to see horrible things in the news. So I don't really watch the news. I, didn't, I don't follow politics. I just thought that it was a meme. And then when they were doing the votes, it was like a day or two before, I ate a shitload of edibles. I mean, I... Man, I'm at like 2,000 milligrams. Not, not like a shitload, but enough to fuck you up. So 2,000 milligrams. I passed out at like 6 o'clock in the afternoon. I woke up. I got on Twitter, and it said, President Donald Trump, or Donald Trump is one, blah, blah, blah. And the first thing that came to my mind was how long have I been asleep? What the fuck did I just eat? Am I awake yet? Did the guy from The Apprentice just become the president of the United States? holy shit and then that's what happened for the next four years so guys i'm just letting you know right now when there's politic talk on here pff, i better start learning because i don't know what the fuck's going on that's my uh full extent but the reason i brought that up is because joe biden is now president i have no idea anything about the man Ugh, i just know he won and i know his uh the vice president looks like Maya Rudolph because she always plays her on SNL. And she did a very, I'm just going to say, I didn't know who the lady, the vice president, I didn't know who she was before this presidential campaign. Maya Rudolph is a good actress. She acts just like this woman, dude. That, there it is. SNL is my political uh, 
banking. There you go. That's how I find out about politics. So I'm Jim Carrey, go ahead. I'm just glad the whole shit's over. Bro, I didn't even pay attention. It could have been over tomorrow, and I didn't know it was over. Did you just put up Maya Angelou on the screen? Sure did. Oh, Maya Rudolph. Okay, there you go. You did click Maya Angelou first, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm not yeah, tripping. Yeah. I, uh, I was talking about how she plays such a good, um, what's her name? Camilla Harris, right? Yeah. Vice president? Mm -hmm. Yo, I really, really got to learn these things because... Me asking who the vice president was just made me disappointed in myself. You're gonna want, yeah. There's a couple key <clears throat> terms and names. Yeah, gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to learn this stuff because I, at least in school I knew who all these people were because he had to. After school, and I just started going into the packs and selling shit. I don't fucking know or care who the president was back then. I don't give a shit when you're when you're trying to make fucking money. You don't care who the president is when you're poor. The fuck? Or when you don't trust the whole system. Uh, that's yeah, I didn't care. I was place. a drug dealer. You think I'm like, yo, I'm voting. Fuck, no, I'm not voting. Yo, the first time I ever tried to vote, dude, <clears throat> I got a break on my pizza job. I was selling weed too. I got a break on my pizza job, smoked a bowl on the way to the voting section in Merced, walked up, waited in line, did it all, and they go, uh, you need to vote in your side of town. This is what the bitch told me. You need to vote in your side of town, in your jurisdiction. And I thought, I just want to vote. I'm on my lunch break. Yeah, you're in the wrong side of town. And when she said you're in the wrong side of town, I thought, I'm not voting. I am not driving all the way to my shitty part of the town on my lunch break. And I felt so played that I actually mm -hmm. tried to contribute. Yeah, and I got fucking, yeah. get out of here. That's exactly what they did to me. So, yeah, for the past eight minutes, I've been showing you my ignorance. Um, maybe I'll learn. Maybe I'll learn some shit because uh, I have no idea what I'm talking about. But that could change. That could change. So, <clears throat> that's the current event. <laughs> that, that's the current event <clears throat> and like we said earlier Packers are out Bills are out that's the other current event Patrick Mahomes has a 503 million dollar fucking contract I just want to high five that guy I just want to high five him so hard good uh, every good other commercial fucking uh, in every commercial but good job motherfucker get that money from these fools yes for Tom Brady I love you Fuck you, Tom Brady. You're always fucking up everyone's plans. If you're not a Patriots fan, fuck you. Because, man, oh, it's just one of those things. It's like, you're so good. Just, bro, take a vacation. Just take a fucking vacation. Stop ruining everyone's year because you're ruining everyone's year every year. But like I said, if you're a Patriots fan, that's cool. But I'm not a fucking Patriots fan. But it's 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 cool, man. I'm I'm happy that I grew up in the Tom Brady era. Even though even though Tom Brady might be a cheetah, we're still gonna kick some cougar ass. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's a che he's a cheater. Still good. You can't fake throwing that motherfucking ball. <laughs> that motherfucker is a badass. But to go down to this to Tampa, go to Tampa and go like... straight back, you monster. Who oh, did you pay? Who did you yeah. pay? Because uh, sometimes I don't believe it. Sometimes I'm like, yo, that call, that call looked bought. <laughs> yo, I don't, know uh, what it is. I don't know what it is. Sometimes it's like, yo, are you guys friends? Because I believe I wouldn't put it past you. Anyway, that's my uh, football rant because fucking Tom Brady's in the Super Bowl again. And Mahomes, they're going to smash. Tampa Bay doesn't have a chance. Uh, my Patrick Mahomes and Der uh, was it Tyreek Hill and yeah. Travis Kelsey? Yeah. That yeah, team, yeah. that mm -hmm. little package is unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Try, yeah. try to fucking stop it. Come on, man, not happening. I'm so, I'm so like, all I know is the Bills. I was with this. I was with Travis Kelsey all day. Didn't even know who he was or what team. Oh, he when you filmed him. the other yes. day, he's a big motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, he's giant. Yeah, he's a bad. And then he absolutely destroyed us all game long on Sunday. I forgot. So Marty didn't mention it. We did a practice episode last week, guys, so we can, like, run the sound and everything. And then right after, this fool had a, a shoot the next morning. And he texts me because we were talking about, I wonder what it's going to be. He has a shoot with this company he works with. And he knows it's a T-Mobile commercial, right? That's I all didn't he knows. Even know oh that. no, you didn't know it's a T-Mobile commercial. All he knows is it's a commercial, but he'd done a T-Mobile commercial before with that company. So we were like, "Oh, it might be a T-Mobile commercial." 
He doesn't text me or nothing because Marty gets up at fucking five in the morning. So he was already doing his thing. He didn't text me because he was on his, he was working. And I just look on Instagram and there's Marty filming fucking Gwen Stefani. And it's a Super Bowl commercial. You monster. This fool has filmed two Super Bowl commercials in the past month. Wait, four? Yeah, because the the first shoot with Anthony Anderson was three different uh, commercials. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And then you did the ESPN show. Yo, there's so much cool shit going on, so man. Much going so on. much cool it's shit. Hard to even. It's very cool. Uh, this fool's having a a good year, a good past couple months. And then the Bills lost, and Conor McGregor got his ass knocked out. But that's okay. That's we're all right. We're going to take those on the chin. Yeah, that's we're going to okay. take those. That's okay. The podcast is launched. I'm feeling okay. Yeah, we're good. You know, <sighs> I got nothing to complain about, man. So I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy that we're finally... We're finally doing it. We've been talking about this for a year, just trying to set it up, and here it is. You know what I'm saying? It's just, uh, it's very, uh, I don't even know how to put it. I would I say it's surreal, it. and for all the fans that have been watching the yeah, whole time, surreal, yeah. watch it come from an idea into something. Yeah, shit, for, I remember just saying shit. it. Yeah, I just said it in a story time. You know what would be fun? A podcast. I just said that shit randomly. Mm-hmm. And then I started thinking about it more and more and more and thinking, there's so many people watching our YouTube channel for the stories. All it is is talking. Except in the stories, I'm not, um, uh, because I get to edit this. But here, fuck it. Episode one, I got some ers and ahs, all right? I'll be all right. And yeah, yeah I'm looking at uh, notes, all right? If you're wondering where I'm looking, I don't got no weed. Hey, Hrussy, can you possibly roll a joint? Thank you. Yes, I should just roll like five joints before I start these. Um, well, we're learning; it's a learning process. But uh, I have a story I want to tell you guys because it's just fun. It's a fun story. It's really not fun. It's just kind of fucked up. But it's fun for me to think about it and go, "Yeah, that." That's real. That's what happened. <laughs> Most people hear my stories. They're like, are you okay? Did you have to go to therapy? Like, no, I have to go to therapy. The fuck are you talking about? It just happened. I'm here now. Uh, which which story should I tell? Should I, Marty, you pick. Should we go weed selling? Should we go almost dying? Should we go gangbangers? What should we do? I'm from the land of gangbangers, meth, and CPS paperwork. Man, I feel like we've, we've kind of touched on these all already. We have. We have, but not in this episode. This is our first episode. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. You know I what mean, I'm saying? We did a I'm test run. We, you, you, you got the near-death experiences with the, the, the... There's so much shit. There's There's... There's so much, but I just wanted to talk about it because there's, a, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of people that just saw this picture on Spotify and click like, "What the fuck is this?" This is for you guys, for all the other fans. They probably heard, they probably heard this, but um, <clears throat> let's go with uh, let's go with the good old. You know what? Let me tell these guys real quick. Let me tell you guys about the weirdest fucking weed dealer I ever had in my entire life. All right, let's just go because I've had some awesome awesome ones i've had some movies the shit that people don't post on the internet is so much more wild than the shit that people fucking film the stuff that doesn't get filmed you guys won't you wouldn't even believe it if i you wouldn't believe it unless i filmed it some of the shit the lifestyles I, all my friends used to be drug dealers i've seen some crazy shit i've seen a lot of drugs I've seen a lot of money I've seen a lot of guns and everybody i've ever fucked with just smiling Everybody's so happy. I don't like drug dealers that I have to be like, oh, do I need a gun to go to this guy's house? No. My friends with the guns, they just I just have cool guns. Do you see what I'm saying? So I was never really like in danger because I never put myself in that position. Never, never in life. The reason is I always tell my girlfriend, um, like I said earlier, I'm the cable guy. I grew up on movies. That's how I was my babysitter. I watched movies. I learned all my life lessons from watching movies, guys. Everything I've ever learned is from movies, um, shows, things I remember. Like uh, watching where I'm walking. I walk around alleys. I don't go by doorways. I don't go into places unless I have a way out. It's because of Goodfellas. (laughs) When Robert De Niro is telling uh, Karen, uh, uh, the wife, hey, go down there. There's some dresses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, go in. No, go in. When he's doing that, I was... And the guys were in there. 
they're moving plastic. Yeah, all bad. I remember I was about probably six or seven when I watched that. And I'm watching it, and I'm sitting there watching it and assessing, like, he's going to kill you and wrap you in plastic, huh? And then I thought, she's smart. She ran right away, right back to the thing. If I'm ever in it, and that's how I learned that lesson. Like, don't walk by alleys. You walk around. You don't walk into places. You don't know where the fuck you're at. You don't walk into places you can't get right out immediately. You know, like, that's how I always learned that shit. So <clears throat> growing up, movies, that was it. So let's i want to tell you guys about i don't even know why the fuck i brought that up but <laughs> i'm going to tell you guys about uh <clears throat> the weirdest drug dealer i ever had in my life oh yeah the reason i brought it up i've seen some crazy crazy unbelievable things because of people i know i used to sell mass amounts of weed so come on man you get 100 packs for people there's it's a lot of weed it doesn't sound like a lot of weed to some people that are like 100 pounds who gives a fuck bro I, 10 but i don't care i'm just saying to me as a kid when i was broke seeing that much weed frustrate motivation like my homies pounds sounds like a lot of yeah weed everybody i would hope well to my friends 100 pounds is like oh that's my 10 o'clock appointment you know like i have friends that are straight businessmen with this weed and, and if they weren't selling weed, they could be working on any big giant Fortune 500 company. Do, do you know that, that? You guys know those people. Oh, if you weren't into this, you'd be killing it in this. If you didn't grow up like this, oh, you'd be the man over here. If I wasn't doing weed marketing and all this other crazy shit, I'd probably be working for some big company because the marketing shit we do and the campaigns we do get crazy ass numbers and impressions. So if we weren't into the weed, we'd be doing something else. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of the drug dealer homies I know, I mean, just. I've never seen people make so much money in my entire. I've never seen three or four hundred thousand dollars just be made in a couple minutes, and my friend like, oh yeah, just put it right there and not give a fuck because that's just his appointment in the morning. The fool's gonna do it four more times today, and to them, it's nothing. So fifty grand, like, okay, I don't care. That to me, like, fifty grand's a lot. To somebody working at fucking McDonald's, so like I was, fifty grand's the world. So there's levels, you know what I'm saying? So when it comes to these things, you'd have to almost film it for people to believe it because it's unfucking real So I'm gonna tell you about not those drug dealers though. We have more episodes guys. I'll talk I'll talk about all these guys uh, Let's call this guy Dan because this is, I talked about this on a story time Like I said earlier when John disappeared, I was weedless I had no connect anymore because John was the connect I didn't bother to keep my relationship with anybody else I got weed from because John was the man. So when he disappeared for about a month and a half, I had no weed connect. I was buying zips from people I sold weed to. You know it's bad when you're hitting up people that hit you up for pounds and go, hey, man, you got a couple zips? You know it's getting rough. So my friend Shane introduced me to a guy called Dan, a guy named Dan. And I'm going to just, I want you guys to... Pretend you're in my fucking brain and you're looking through my eyes. If you're if you are in a car, here we go. Book on tape. Let's get. I want you guys to imagine everything. I go meet Dan. Um, uh, the, he opens the door. Regular looking, kind of chunky guy. He looks like uh, the guy from Shaun of the Dead. The fat dude looks just like that fucking guy, even with the beard stubble, all that shit. So I walk in and Dan lets me in with Shane. Shane's introducing me to Dan. He lives in Merced in a nice house. And back, you know, I was like 18. Like, Dan, this fool's got a nice ass fucking house. He's like 25. Fuck yeah, what's he do? And I'm like, fool, what's he do? You're picking up weed. So this is me talking to myself in my head, right? I'm burnt. So I'm just talking to myself. I walk in two steps and I just smell like body odor, bad, like wet body secretions in the air, like nasty, not shit. Like someone stinks, like they don't wash themselves. What body secretions in the air is the most Bro, interesting shit? I've you could heard. almost taste that shit. Like it could stick to your clothes, type of smell. You guys, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I walk in, I get two steps, I smell it. I get three steps in, I look to the right, and there's a woman right there in a hospital bed. And she, I'm, I'm big. My grandma Dolores, she was big too, right? I've never seen anybody that big before. I never seen a bird, a, a, not, not only in movies, like uh, what's eating Gilbert grape, shit like that. Never seen somebody that size. She was 
such a nice fucking lady. I mean, oh, I was going over there for months, like five or six months, all every day. Re up, get more, get more, get more weed, get more weed. She was taxing me. I'll get to that later. Such a nice, such a nice woman. But she was probably like seven, seven hundred pounds or something. She took up the whole hospital bed. She had um breathing tubes in. And she was like, oh, hello. She was like very soft, like, oh, hi. <laughs> she was very cool. And I said, oh, hello. And she's like, oh, hello. And she had a TV right there. And I walked by her. So that was his mom. And I mean, I assume, I assume it's his mom. And I walk in to the toward the kitchen area. And oh, it stinks, bro. It smells violent. And I walk in and there's like two or three kids, dirty as fuck. You know what I mean? Like when you go to Walmart, you just want to beat the fuck out of a parent because their kids are so dirty. That's how dirty these kids were. But, you know, they're in diapers. They're like three. So, you know, they're kids. They're kids. So I'm not thinking anything of it. I'm like, okay, you're dirty, but you're in your house. But I noticed how dirty these fucking kids were. Like CPS dirty. You know what I'm saying? Like you were cleaning a fucking chimney in the 40s. And I see these kids and they automatically think, oh, man, are these your kids? Are you one of these fucking dads? And I look. I look past the kids and there's the most fucking weed I have seen in a long time. I mean, to that point, I've seen a hundred packs before, but top shelf, I've seen a hundred pack of outdoors, but the top shelf has probably had like 60 or 70 perfect pounds. I mean, you could see the purple through the bag. You could see the green. That's back when sour diesels were popping a lot of purples and, uh, Joint throw. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And um, a carry package. Thank you. And I see all the packs. And I, everything just goes away. I go, oh, fuck, man. These kids, all these kids aren't dirty. And I look at the packs like, yeah, what's up with these pounds? Then he tells me the price. And I just wanted to fight him because it was so expensive. And the house stunk. And his dad comes in from the back room. And his dad's a big dude. He's like Don Vito from... Uh, Bam, from Jackass. He's like Don Vito size. Looks like him. Just kind of like regular fat dude. Walks in, but he's like three or 400 pounds. He's not He's not as big as the mom. And uh, the only reason I'm, t- I'm saying this, guys, and even talking about how big they were, is because it all is going to be, it all comes together. All right, here we go. We go into the back room because he's like, you only want to try this weed out? They don't smoke in the living room because the kids are right there. And automatically, I'm like, good. Thank you for not just blowing smoke in your dirty-ass kid's face. So we go in the back room. We has a bong right there, and there is a fucking dude in there. Straight up South Park when they talk about gamers. This fool's gaming. And Dan goes, yo, Slim, let me see your bong. He called his brother. It's his little brother, Slim. Slim was probably about 500 pounds maybe. But that motherfucker was rocking it. No shirt, no shoes, just shorts. He- hell of soda co- bottles and cans in that room. Oh, my God. This man had so many fucking cans and bottles in that room playing games. And he just went, get out of my room. And he had a beard. He wasn't a child. He's like fucking 25. He had a beard. Get out of my room, Dad. He goes, shut the fuck up. I give you weed. Shut the fuck up. And he just went right back to his game. Like, he punked his little brother, and he was being so weird. And this is my first impression, guys. This is my first time in this guy's house. We take a bong, we take a bong rip, and I, like, cup my lips on the bong, so I don't put my lips on the bong, because this motherfucker stunk like shit. He was dirty. It was just like, oh, man, uh, get me out of this motherfucker's room. It stinks in here. And then we go back in the living room, and I'm like, that's where the smell was coming from. Oh, my God. It was all the way from your back room. Holy shit. So long story short, we get the packs. Uh, he completely molests me on the fucking price. Uh, sorry, I, that took so long to say. He molested me on the price, guys, okay? He raped my pockets, and I paid. I think I paid, I think it was all oh, 1100 bucks for the Q. <laughs> Almost 300 bucks an ounce. I feel like, uh, anyway, I paid it. I fucking paid it, dude. <laughs> And I get the weed. I'm like, yo, this weed's fucking fire. I'll be back tomorrow. And that's how I started talking to his mom more. And she's a real nice lady. This is not the weird part, guys. When he was weighing my weed out, he, for those of you watching on YouTube, he's looking down. Here's the scale. Here's the packs. He's weighing out my QP. And he just drools. One long string of drool. just, And I can see it break his lip and go, 
and it starts stretching like the black stuff from Fern Gully and it starts stretching and I'm looking at it and imagine me like zooming in with my eyes like don't fall in the weed please and I see the string of spit it goes down and it goes splash touches his stomach and it hooks onto his stomach so I'm like yeah I just didn't want you to drool inside my fucking weed and then I thought what's wrong with him that he's just drooling we're having a conversation the man's just sitting there drooling first impression super stinky he's drooling his kids are dirty his brother's gross so this is not why I brought him up guys that's a regular dirty ass dude right regular guy regular dude this is where this is why I brought him up okay so remember Dan, oh yeah I forgot to mention like oh yeah I told you Dan he's kind of out of shape he's like the guy from Shaun of the Dead he's like my size but he's got a fucking gut he's pretty fucking fat you definitely can't touch his toes and um this motherfucker tells me he, we come over to get some zips but he's at his homies like a mile away and i just pulled some random garage and i thought all right shane's with me as long as shane's with me fuck it it's fine because i don't go to random motherfucker spots i'm not trying to get robbed or fucking held captive anyway I, I, they open the garage door some mexican dude i'm like oh hell no nah. fool's fool's got long socks on why am i here and then dan's there and i'm like all right Dan, dan's a white dude by the way um they're in there working out with like weights and shit and Dan's all sweaty. I'm like, whoa, Dan, you could move? So maybe you can touch your toes. Like, maybe you can. And uh, we start talking about the weed. And we I don't know how we get into the topic, guys. You know, weed dealers. He just starts talking. And he goes, I'm quoting you. Yeah, I was, tra <laughs> I was trained by a Native American. He was in Vietnam. He showed me hand-to-hand -hand combat. And me, I'm I, I'm fairly new to Dan, so I'm not trying to just bust up laughing his fucking face. Because even though, even me, I'm like, your big ass ain't doing no hand-to-hand -hand combat, you fucking lying piece of shit. Like, you're bigger than I am, fool, and I am not doing hand-to-hand -hand combat. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> the way he said it, yeah, he's Native American. Like, fool, you might as well put a spotlight on you, you fucking actor. This is not right. This is fake. And he goes, yeah, he used to put me against the wall and punch me as hard as he could until I started blocking all the punches. He said the the Indian man would put, go back against the wall and he'd have Dan punch him. And he said the guy would block every punch like a fucking ninja. Just block it and break down the arms, like break it down, move it. And I'm sitting there like, yo, give me my weed. That's what I'm trying to telepathically to look at Shane. Like, you, can you tell your friend to stop lying? Just give me the weed. I'm, I, I have money. I just want to buy weed and get out of here. And I'm looking at Shane, and Shane kind of does this one to me. While Dan's on look like, yo, this fool's lying his ass off. And I'm looking at Shane. We both like, okay, we both established that he's lying. Okay, let's listen. And I'm like, oh, really? You're back against the wall? Crazy. So how much is the weed? And I'm just trying to get out of there. And he goes, no, nah, man, he taught me for years. Like, I bet you guys couldn't even land a punch on me. And I tell him, Oh, man, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, I don't want to punch you. And he goes, no, no, I bet you couldn't land a punch on me. He tried to tame me for years. And I go, yeah, dude, I probably could. I, I don't know how to fight. I'm just trying to get I'm just trying to get out of there. I don't want to start fighting. You know what I'm saying? He goes, no, nah, hell no. You guys try to land a punch on me. And Shane looks at him like, I'm good. So we and Shane now establish that we both don't want to fight Dan in the garage. So I'm like this joint. He, this is some Napoleon Dynamite shit. This is real. This is real and it gets better. Okay. So he goes, No, nah, man, I'm gonna put my back against the wall. I bet you can't hit me. I go, I don't, I don't want to do it, man. I really don't. Shane goes, I'm good. He goes, I will give you an ounce right now. No, 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 no. I will give you both an ounce right now if you can hit me. I look at Shane like, Did he just say I'll give you $300 if you can hit me? Because that's all I heard. I, an ounce? 300 because you're taxing me? Yeah, I'll take that fucking deal. And, uh, Shane, he stand, he has his back against the wall, and Shane like, like half ass. Uh, you blocked it, <laughs> like you know what I mean. I just, uh, like, oh, got me. He goes, no, I want you guys to really try to hit me. That's what he said. I want you to really try to hit me. Try to hit me in the face. I go, bro, I'm not trying to hit you in the face. I will give you guys two zips right now if you can land anything on me, land a finger on me, and I will give you guys two ounces. I look at Shane like, oh hell. He goes, all right, can we go at the same time? And I look at Shane like. You smart motherfucker. And he goes, yep, I don't care. Both of you at the same time. Guys, let me explain to you what the fuck I witnessed. 
E Honda was in this man's heart. Thousand hand slap. That's this guy. So I do this, guys. I'm looking at his face, right? And I do this and try to trick him. I pretend to go for his face. I try to punch him with my left hand in the stomach. This motherfucker does this. I mean, breaks my shit. Just smacks me in the wrist so violently hard and fast that, you know, when you get that cold feeling in your bone where you smack your bone hard? That's what I got instantly. He blocked Shane's hand. And me and Shane looked at him like, what the fuck? Okay, maybe you got lucky. And I'm thinking, two sips, huh? And I start going fucking fast, like trying to just just get a finger on this man's body. Remember, his back's against the wall. He's just blocking us. Shane is punching with his two hands like a human. I'm a human. I got two fucking hands, too. Sam, I mean, uh, Dan, he's got fucking 35 hands, apparently. This motherfucker is shark eyes rolled back all black, and he's just doing this bullshit. E Honda breaking and slapping my fucking hands away. Two hands blocking them. Just doing this, looking straight, ta, ta, ta. And I'm just in disbelief, like, there's no way this is real. This motherfucker's serious. I didn't land one finger on him. Not He ended up giving us a couple nugs just, to, like, to do it. <laughs> I didn't land a finger on him. Shane didn't land one fucking finger on him, guys. When this man says he was trained by a fucking Native American soldier, he was not kidding. I thought this fucking drooling ass stinky dan i thought drooling stinky dan was a nasty ass drug dealer no not at all this man was a killer i didn't realize that drooling as high as dan could really move like that he was i've never seen anybody in my life do that never seen anybody move faster in person i've seen bruce lee movies but this was in person all right not done then he showed me i can disable and at this point me and shane were like yo what else did you learn like we we're like no way no fucking way this is real we ended up buying the weed anyway but i guess he gave us a couple nugs extra and we smoked it together and so we're like we're hooked we both now look at dan as a different person like no way are you serious can we hang out with you can, can we chill for a little bit like we're like astonished and he says yeah you want to see how to disable a person's arm and uh this motherfucker he goes it kind of hurts i told him i don't want to do that man he's like i'll give you a couple more nugs I'm like, all right <laughs> so I said, all right. And this motherfucker, he goes, try to punch me in the face. Go, I'm not trying to punch you in the face. He goes, I'll block it. Don't worry. I'm like, yeah, that's true. You will block it. And I go to punch him in the fucking face. And this fool smacks me in the inner part of my like armpit, but not of the armpit. He hits me so fast with his knuckle. And then my arm just did this. Shut off. I'm my brain fully functional. I'm trying to tell it to move my arm. My arm won't move. Never felt like that in my life. I've never been so like, what the fuck is going on? Like my arm would not move. He goes, don't worry. You go back about 30, 40 seconds. And he's telling me these things like, yo, did you steal all this weed and kill somebody to get it? Because you're an assassin. You shut my arm off. Shut my arm off. Showed me and Shane that day how to shut someone's arm off. For the next five months, that's all we did when we got drunk. Like, yo, you want me to show you how I could, you know, shed your arm? And nobody's going to say, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And I had to convince them, like, no, come on, it's real. And then showing everybody, everybody thought we were fucking tripping until we did it. And that was like a new party trick. Yo, you want me to fuck up your nervous system? And that's exactly what happened. And then me and my girlfriend are watching damn Cobra Kai the other day. And Ralph Macchio gets his fucking arm disabled. That's exactly, exactly what Stinky Dan did to me, guys. So this drug deal, and then about five months of going to him, I found a better connect. That's really what happened. I found a better connect that wasn't taxing the shit out of me, and I never called Dan again. That was it. God damn. That was Dan, <laughs> the fastest fat guy I've ever seen. I mean, Marty, I've never seen a UFC fighter move like that. Maybe Vito Belfort. Was he fucking with you? Like, Bro, he was so psychotic shit fucking this? fast. He had his back against the wall. He wasn't even looking at us in the eyes, and he was just blocking things like he was, like he was had time to see it. Go, uh, no, 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 let me get this one first. Uh, it was astonishing, dude. And I'm just happy that Shane was there because I have a witness. I have a witness that somebody else was there. Because if it's just me, nobody's going to believe me. No one ever fucking believe that. I wouldn't believe you. I wouldn't believe you if you told me. 
I saw it happen. <laughs> Sounds like the plot to something. I, I right? saw it happen, bro. He really did that shit. And the whole time in my head, I'm just doubting, like, you stink and you're a liar. <laughs> That's all I kept thinking. It's like until Pineapple did Express it. meets The Matrix. Dude, he did. You know what's kind of funny? He kind of does look like Danny McBride in fucking Pineapple Express, <laughs> except with a beard. <laughs> he's that shape for sure uh, but yeah dude i've never seen anybody move that fast in my whole fucking life and uh that was dan my weed dealer when i was 19 20 yeah about 19 crazy shit man it was a uh, fun times marty do you have any crazy drug dealer stories from buffalo I'm sure I probably do, but my, my stories don't add up to yours whatsoever. Hey, man, I just want to hear East Coast shit. The only East Coast, like I said, the only knowledge I have of the East Coast is Seinfeld and Home Alone 2. That's that's it. And The Wire, but that's in fucking Baltimore. <laughs> that's not even in New York. That's my East Coast, dude. All movies, if you're from New York, you know, you got to talk like this. And if you don't, we don't know where you're from. Because uh-huh. I'm from, I'm from a different part of America where we're all ignorant as fuck. In California and everybody talks like I do and if you don't you're probably from another state <laughs> yeah all, all my weed stories are just playing cat and mouse with these cops through the side oh trying yo to can I weed, I'm gonna basically. tell I'm gonna tell everybody Marty grew up in uh like a like a pretty drug traffic area and listen to this do you want to hear the funniest thing ever Marty used to get pulled over a lot in the area he lived in because he was white and they thought he was buying drugs because white people only come over there to buy drugs. So Marty was getting fucking discriminated against because of his skin color. <laughs> because they thought he was buying drugs. If that's not the funniest shit, then I thought it was funny. That's that you fuck it. it funny. That's so funny. <laughs> the white supremacist taught me Spanish. You got pulled over in the drug area because you're white. Do you get pulled over and discriminated against because you're white? Is the funny? It would shit. stalk me. Is it's the, the thing funniest. they'd watch me pump gas and then covertly parallel. But yeah, he the definitely don't live over here. I'm like, yo, I just literally left my house right there. Marty's the only white dude over there. That's why. I love that. That is the funniest fucking thing ever, man. I've lived here for eight years and never been pulled over. Not once. Not once. Yep, because you uh, you rock the straight bill hat. You look like you wear RVCA. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. I don't, I don't know. I, th- I don't Oh, you know. rock O'Neal because how uh, lucky that that's your fucking know, name and you I get to rock O'Neal. Yeah. I know. I <laughs> I'm sponsored. It. Yeah, I got I got a rich dad. Yeah. I got a rich dad. <laughs> um, real quick, guys. <coughs> ad read number two. This video is sponsored by us once again. <laughs> once again, this video is sponsored by us exclusively. Um, exclusively. You can go right now to dopezilla.com and see us. <laughs> Sponsoring this shit. Sponsoring this shit. My bank account. Um, yeah, that's our ad read. We don't have any sponsors. So we're not doing that yet. We're we just wanted to get this first episode out to you guys. It's been long, a long wait. We just wanted to talk. We are at two hours. Exactly. We've been talking for two hours. Wow. If you've been sticking around the whole time, fucking thank you. Sorry, excuse me. You stuck around this long. Thank you so much. That's fucking awesome. Whoo, two hours. Nice, guys. Episode one. Long awaited for all the story times, all the fucking weed reviews, smoking 40 gram joints and 5,000 milligram challenges and smoking 10 grams of hash. Why? Because it's awesome. I always get that question, dude. I always get that question. Why do you smoke so much weed? Because I did the math the other day. It's kind of sad. Uh, if I smoke, if I, if I smoke, a, we were at almost an ounce a day ish and it, and it drops like a little less, less than a half. If we're smoking like a QP ish a week when we were smoking heavy, that's a you know, that's 12 pounds a year ish, maybe more because we do the weed challenges and, you know, reviews. So for the past, I've been smoking weed for fucking 15 years at least, but smoking heavy like that, probably like eight, eight years, nine years, we're over a hundred pounds of weed. That's fucking insane. It's like, I smoked a hundred pounds of weed. You're telling me I spent at least $200,000 on weed in the past eight years. (laughs) Oh my God. No, you stupid motherfucker. That's how I feel. But, um, (laughs) the... 
through all that. You had a business though. At least you at least you were enterprising throughout that. that yeah, that's no, just overhead. it's just it's just crazy to say it. Like you spent at least two hundred bands on weed this past decade. More. That's how I feel. But it's just a head stash weed. Just to smoke. This is not selling weed. We're just smoking weed. Um so yeah, for everyone. I know I know there's a couple names out there that uh people have been here the longest. I've, I mean, people have been here since the beginning when I first started Instagram. It's so crazy to see it. Like I always say, like, you guys watch me grow up on camera. I was a little, I was a, I was a child, basically, when I started doing this shit. I'm still a kid. I'm still a fucking kid. But it's just weird. It's like, yo, it's been nine, almost nine years. That's a long time. It's a long time to be doing something. It's a long time to be doing, and I don't even remember which year's what. I just know by picture, like, oh, that was this year at this event. But the fucked up part about it is, that's what? how long it takes to get good at something. Dude, we've only been talking on camera for a year and a half. Like, I did not talk on camera whatsoever until we started doing YouTube. Yeah, it's shit scary. I, I was just talking about the other day. When I did my first hosting event, yo, I stood on the side of the stage. I threw shit out. I didn't want to get on the stage. I didn't touch the microphone. I didn't do nothing. I do not like talking in front of people. And then when I realized, like, yo, just talk, you fucking dickhead. And, yeah, now I'm fine. Now I'll talk in front of a million people. I don't give a shit. We have a privilege to fight. Yeah, I've been watching The Office for nine years straight, bro. Everything is a fucking Office reference to me. It's so sad. Mark, do you watch Office? Wait, no, you're but busy and you're a father. Never mind. You. Yeah, yeah, I was say, never mind. You have responsibilities and shit. <laughs> you watching The Office at 12 o'clock at night smoking weed. Um, but yes, the reason, like I said, sorry, it's a long rant. It's, yo, this is be called ranting. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to do a... a, a a segment go, all right, guys, for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to rant and forget about what the fuck I was talking about and ask you, what the fuck was I talking about? You guys ready to go? That's what the whole rant's going to be called. Um, The reason I smoke so much weed, that's what it was. The reason I smoke so much weed, and people ask me this all the time, and some people call me an asshole, but I don't fucking care. The reason I smoke so much weed is because when I was younger and it was hard to get weed and I was broke as fuck, all I wanted was like two joints enough money to go buy some food and I can chill. But it was one or the other. You guys, for you relating to me, you know the pain of we can get one Swisher, a 10 sack. We can both buy two McChickens. We can go to the store and get one two liter. You know what I mean? You're mapping out what $15 can get you. Yeah. You don't understand I, the pain of I don't. there barely being any weed to be had, period, in the whole town. That's different, man. You're on the fucking East Coast, man. It's a whole other story, you right? It's, it's different, man. The, those you guys had snow. Are, yeah, that's a, you, you might end up on an adventure. Yeah. When I moved to Oregon, oh, it was an adventure to kind of get weed. When you don't know the people in town, and I don't like talking to strangers, yeah, you're probably not going to find any weed, man. Um yeah, no, I could, I could see, I could see why you're talking about that on the East Coast, but I mean more of like the times where I was just sitting there watching Half Baked because I wanted to watch people smoke weed because I love that movie when I didn't have any weed, and thinking, fourteen year old me, like one day I'm gonna have a job where I can do what I want and I'm gonna smoke as much weed as I want, and now that time has come and I take full advantage of it because when I was younger I didn't think it was gonna happen, I just hoped for it, and now that it's here, yeah, I'll smoke another joint. <coughs> Oh, you guys want to take a dab? Yeah, I'll take a dab. Why fucking not? That's how I feel. Why not? This is what I've always wanted to do, and I might as well take full advantage of it while I can. So that's why I smoked so much weed for the nights that I didn't have any weed or money, and I was just sitting there bored, couldn't find it, stuck in my grandma's in the country. Mm. Yeah, that's why. Horrible. Yeah, horrible. You know how many times I've searched it? Yo, you guys know when you're a teenager and you're bored and you're like at your grandma's or your aunt's or something and you search the whole house like there's got to be something in this house for me to do. There's got to be like, oh, here's my aunt's old stash box with some fucking cocaine in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I found coke in a jewelry box and I don't know whose, whose box it was. found coke. I was 17 in the bottom of a box and it was green felt and it was all like rocks and rubbed into the felt so I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure if it was actually Coke so I didn't want to snort it, but it was definitely Coke. We were in Texas for like two and a half months. No weed at all. Oh God. I found a nugget behind the toaster oven. Your fucking... 
We were your in a rental. voice. Your voice right now. <laughs> I found. <laughs> it was like a Nirvana, like walking through the desert. Wait, wait, like, wait. You found it behind your own toaster oven? We were in a rental. It was a fully furnished. So somebody left it? Yes. <gasps> by chance. Oh, that's Freak bomb. Shock coincidence. Bomb. Yeah, it was amazing. That's cool. When we were in Cancun and we got stuck because our plane doesn't work. All right. That's what they said. This plane's not working. And we went back to the uh, airport after the airport was closed because we're on the tarmac for fucking four hours. It was closed. I don't speak Spanish. I can't read the signs. It took me so long to find my way back to the fucking to the right line because it was empty. There's nobody there. And there was power outages because it was fucking hot. So it's going pitch black at night. I'm stuck. I have nowhere to go because my vacation's over. And we met two people that happened to be from fucking Van Nuys. Two dudes, uh, I mean, a, a, a couple, a chick and a dude. The guy had his own vape pen that he makes from his own company. He happened to have a vape pen. I had no weed. I hit that bitch like four times and got a high as shit off it. And you saved, like, whoever you are, you saved my ass. Remember that, Rosie? We were standing in line. And the line, remember, this is a, a plane full of people that now have, the, from the resort, that now don't have a resort room. So they put us in a hotel in the really bad part of Cancun. As we're driving there, I'm looking at Rosie like, I don't like this. There's rubble right here on the ground. And I, when I said there's rubble, there was broken walls of buildings just on the ground with a fucking wire going through the brick mm -hmm. and shit, the concrete, and it was just exposed. And I looked at Rosie like, this is some fucking bullshit. And then I saw... People ride by screaming out of a car, and then the cops came by with a bunch of guns. And I look at Rose like, yo, get the fuck. And I'm fucking vegan. What am I going to eat? We ate Pringles. Hella Pringles and a, and a lemonade. Shitty-ass lemonade. But it was dumb cheap. And I can't remember, how much is it? A dollar? Like, wait, I'm doing the math. Like, yeah, I'm going to give you a dollar as a tip. I'm back out of here. I, I was tipping. Every, I didn't know at the resort. I was everybody's best friend. I kept tipping everybody and not remembering, yo, American money is way more valuable. You just tip that man like $300. I'm like, bro, that's fine. Then he's going to like me and he's going to be nice to me. So I'm going to tip him again. I was tipping people like 20 bucks, 15 bucks, just for doing miscellaneous. Set. Oh, thanks, man. Just because I was on vacation. And then I found out the ratio. <laughs> And that, that's why they were doing all this shit. Because I was tipping them every you. time. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> no. No. Hey, man, I don't do the... I didn't light him on fire. That one wasn't me. <laughs> that shit replays in my head every time I think about that. Going back to Mexico, like, yo, that guy scared me. He scared the fuck out of me. But no, my whole family's from Mexico. They always go. I'm the only one that's never gone. Uh, they always go to the... Uh, they have uh, property in Acapulco. That's where my grandma's from. And uh, my whole family goes. My little sisters, my little brother, everybody. I'm just the only one that's not gone. Because I ain't trying to go to a country you can't get high at. I'm cool, man. I want to stay in fucking L.A. where I can smoke fucking weed. I can be in California, smoke weed. I, even, I don't even go to the Midwest. Man. You can't smoke weed there. So <laughs> I'm happy here. You guys are archaic. Yeah, like, yo, I don't even speak Spanish, man. I'm going to get lost out there. But I do. I would like to go. I've never seen where my grandma's from. That'd be sick. But uh, my grandpa's from the jungle out there, jungle of Mexico. But uh, dude, straight up, guys, this is first episode. This is a ranty. We're talking about random shit now. I see. I almost started. There's so many stories. My grandpa, my Mexican ass grandpa. If you guys know old Mexican people, they think they can fix everything with nothing. I was about to tell a story where he tried to fix, help me fix my car, but we should wrap this up. It's already over two hours in, and I don't want to go another 35 minutes and you, just for you guys to go, your grandpa's dumb. Like, no, he's he's really smart. He just, uh, nah, yeah, he's dumb. <laughs> like, I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> no, my grandpa's smart as fuck. That fool made money off of nothing. So he's smart. But just when he fixes stuff sometime, like, yo, grandpa. That is not how that happens. Even I know you don't do that. No, no. All Mexican old people. Oh, shit. All right. Then he, then he goes, ah, how do you say it? Uh, something. And he says it in English. Oh, that's right. You know I don't speak Spanish. 
<laughs> I'm the only one in my family that doesn't speak Spanish. <laughs> no still, lie. Still I roasting the, you about it 30 years later. Only one. The only one. My sisters speak Spanish now, too. I'm the only one. My little brothers and sisters, when they used to get mad at me, they would look at their my, my stepmom and say whatever happened in Spanish so I wouldn't know what they were saying so they could lie. And be like, yeah, Thomas said this. I'm like, you motherfucker. No, I didn't. And I'm like, I don't care. You know I'm an adult, right? You can't tell on me. They didn't get that until they got older. They always start telling me, like, bitch, I have my own house. I'm just going to leave. Um See, we can't be talking. I'll just rant. It's been another three fucking minutes. Can't do this, guys. We got to wrap this shit up. Um, episode one, so just bear with me. I'm going to turn my neck this way to look at my notes real quick. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, there we go. It just says outro. <laughs> just wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up, B. I love the Chappelle show. Um... Yeah, well, he's got to stop before we start getting into the Chappelle Show moments. I can't. When that fucking show came out, it took over my whole school. I mean, the next day was just a free-for-all of, what? Okay. Loudest thing in the fucking planet you've ever heard. And I was in football, so we were all doing weights, and all you hear is people screaming like Lil John. <clears throat> and I hadn't seen the episode yet because I missed it. Y- you remember that as a kid, man? Fuck yeah, everybody, that, no, yeah. I'm saying when everybody watched the show and you missed it, and you come to school and everybody's talking about it, like, hey, could you guys stop talking about it so I don't, so you don't ruin it? Uh, no, you should have fucking been there. <laughs> like, oh damn! Not to mention DVR doesn't exist. <clears throat> oh, back then, dude, new Malcolm in the Middle. You guys didn't see what happened. So when the Circle Game came out in that episode of Malcolm in the Middle, if you didn't watch that episode, you got your ass. You got fucking beat to death the next day. You got your ass. You got killed, bro. When the Circle Game came out. It was a free for all at my school, and we were in the ghetto school at Tanaya. Oh, man, they made up so many references off of it. Like, double this, triple that. Oh, you looked again off a mirror. Like, shut the fuck up. Just punch me in the arm. <laughs> it's just stop. Um, but, yeah. So, in conclusion for the first episode, I just want to say for everyone, even if you're brand new and this is the first time you've ever heard us do anything, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for supporting... Um, just something that I've really, really wanted to do. And I'm super glad that me and Marty connected because he I feel like this is it. This is this is what I really, really want to do. I wanna I just I just wanna talk to people, man. I just wanna talk to people, get these conversations. I'm not I don't wanna do the regular So, what's your favorite fucking weed strain? That's not what I wanna do. I wanna get conversations out of people that you wouldn't expect. I wanna get the good shit. I wanna get stuff I want some of you motherfuckers to cry, and I want some of you motherfuckers to die laughing. See what I'm saying? I, I want some good shit. Like I, I said, you're about to just go for it. I want some of you motherfuckers to die. No, dude, <laughs> cry and die. No, hey man, what the fuck's wrong with you? That's not. Uh, I'm the same guy as earlier here. Right, huh? We got waivers. We got waivers. Yeah, when you sign it, uh, it's like a Japanese game show. Like you might get snakes thrown on you when you're sitting in here. I might brand my logo on your leg. <laughs> Oh, shit. Yo, I got to stop. I'm going to keep talking. Here we go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for supporting Push Trees, the Dope is Yola, everything. It's almost been nine years. So for the past of my adult life, <laughs> since I can remember, I've just been growing up on camera. It's really odd to see the start, just like the little funny, shitty pictures from my iPhone 3. And now we're doing fucking podcasts and Hit a million on fucking YouTube. Excuse me. On YouTube and everything's just going great. Everything's going so well. Thank you guys so much for supporting. That's what I really want to say. Thank you for supporting and letting me have the coolest job on the fucking planet. Something that I've been saying since me and my Uncle John were smoking weed in the backyard. One day I just want to smoke weed for a living. (laughs) And it happened, man. Well, not fully just smoke weed. We do a lot more shit, but you guys get the base of it. That's It's the best job on the fucking planet i couldn't be more happy to know that i get to do this shit tomorrow (laughs) i get to do another episode of this we get to do more stuff more fucking ventures 2021 we have some stuff lined up that's not just oh you're you're a fucking uh uh, instagram kid that's why oh you do instagram it's not a job oh trust me it is (laughs) 16 hours a day excuse me 
but now we're on YouTube, like I said, we're doing different platforms. We've got the website, dopeziola.com. Uh, check out Drastic Graphics on Instagram. Uh, do you, Twitter too, Marty? No, nah, not really. No? Yeah, Twitter's hard. Twitter's, uh, where's the pictures? Unsplash, though. We, <laughs> we just hit that half a mil on our first. Like, oh, shit. Nice. Splash is like a photographer app or website, and Marty shit's killing it on there. Marty just filmed fucking Super Bowl commercials, guys. This is a big year for Marty also, man. This is a, uh, he's been doing so much work in all these other podcasts, but not being he's been doing the like I, I i'm gonna speak for you a little bit just from what i've seen you put in a lot of footwork without having a foot in the company yeah you know what i'm saying right. which is not a bad thing right. that's your work that's what you do but it's it's cool because I built my own company yes you built your own company yeah. to help those companies exactly. but in the end it's like yo i really wish i could have got on the ground floor of this and had a part of these podcasts yeah. but it's nothing it's your job that's what it's you do that's awesome it's career. different chapters now this is part this is us this is not just my shit this is us so everything's just gonna everything's just gonna work man everything's gonna work Fuck. i i fucking appreciate all you guys marty's like i said like 15 times well if you film super bowl commercials this year it is crazy. so it's crazy ridiculous. you have super bowl commercials and when we're watching the super bowl marty it's gonna pop up, and some of that footage is yours, ready. man. I'm not ready. Some of that footage is yours, bro. It's the coolest thing. It's the coolest fucking thing ever, man. I just, I love it so much. That's the, that's badass. And uh, now we got this going. We got so much shit going. Dope as usual. It's just fun. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to. St- Honestly, I'm just happy to have another outlet to talk to you guys. You know, because we do story time. We do uh, lives. It's not the same. This is. I don't know. This is a uh, something more. I feel this is more important to me than just doing lives. This is what it's a I, place for all the fans to chill. Yeah, yeah want. man. I want to smoke with dope. Throw it on. Let's hang out. That. Let's smoke. Yeah. Like, this is what I mean. Like, there's another chance to talk to you guys more, unedited, completely raw. This is unedited. It's just, I don't know. Here's my fuck ups. Here's me fucking up. Here's me stumbling over my words. Here's me caught. Like it's it's. It's more, I feel like it's more real and it's more authentic. And when we have guests on here, I'm really excited to have conversations with these people. That's my main thing. I love having conversations. And now that I can have conversations, maybe it's your favorite skater, your favorite rapper, or up and coming this, or a financial advisor of that. And you know these people and you're like, wow, oh, you got them on your show. I really want to hear what they got to say. That's what I want you guys to see. Like, oh, wow, you have this person on? This could be interesting. I want you guys to learn some shit. Like I told told Marty, I, I want you guys to come away with something these solo episodes yeah i'm I'm sure you're not gonna learn like well merced has meth like that's not what you're gonna come away with but i'm saying i want you guys to come away with these interviews more of insight insightful you know what i mean it's not just the -the run-of-the-mill same questions that you've always heard on interviews i want i want people to talk about stuff you never would expect i want your favorite artists to talk about their sister trying to fucking stab them or some crazy shit that they don't put in their songs or in their books. I, I just want that raw, real shit. Like I said, life accomplishments, fuck ups, everything in between. That's the whole point of this is to talk about everything. Uh, we're not perfect. We fuck up. I fucked up many times and I've been, I've, I've gotten my ass whooped. I've gotten shot at. I've gotten a, a bunch of shit. Just like you. I know you're at home like, me too. Fool. I just got shot at right now. Oh, bro, there's crazy shit. We've all grown up in wild places. And if you haven't, the shit's real. Motherfuckers do the shit. So don't judge a book by its cover. You know what I'm saying? The nicest looking guy might be the hardest fucking street person you know. The dude with tattoos on his face might be a really nice person. You can't just judge people. I look super nice and all that shit. You would never guess I had fucking 30 pounds in the trunk, officer. You would never guess that because I have my customer service voice. How are you doing today? Oh, nice. Uh, What can I get you? That's me from working in all these places. That was my cover. I had a job only to cash checks so I didn't get fucking my door kicked in. But you would never guess it because I'm so fucking nice looking. and I look so, oh, Holly, you look like a college student. Yeah, uh, yeah, I kind of do. So, (laughs) and if you see Marty, like, you carried a screw in your pocket? (laughs) Marty, can you look at the camera real quick? So, have they seen your face yet? Yeah, You're yeah. You're like the yeah. nicest guy ever. Like, yo, I don't want to <laughs> fucking cross Marty at, at a liquor store. At a tall T bump and Twista. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know, man. You might fuck me up. Yeah, it's, it's awfully specific. <laughs> I don't know. I was just trying to think of something from fucking 2009. I don't know. Maybe you're bumping yeah, you fucking T.I. No, all that. Yeah, you nailed it. 
So guys, to in conclusion, to wrap this up, we're almost at two and a half hours. Thank you for if you sat here through the whole thing, you're a fucking champion. Thank you so much. Um, if you're listening while driving, please be safe. Thank you for making us a part of your day. If it's the morning on the way to work, I appreciate you. And if you're finishing this episode on the way back from work, you're fucking awesome. Thank you so much. I hope we can make your day a little better. I hope, <clears throat> hope you laughed. I hope it was fun for you. And when we have other guests, and if it was sad, I'm sorry. But sometimes motherfuckers got sad shit to say. I'm excited for the guests to come, guys. First guest is next week. Really excited. Episode two is going to be uh, first guest spot. This is the, what do you call it? Wolverine Origins. Episode one. We got to let you know where we're from. There we go. We're Hugh, not Hugh Jackman. We're Wolverine Origins story, okay? This is episode one. This is where we're coming from. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Dope As Usual podcast. The dopest podcast in the world. And we're going to say that right now. We're only saying that because we have confidence in this thing. And it sounds cool. The dopest podcast in the world. Sounds pretty fucking epic. If you guys have something better, leave it in the fucking comments. And that'll help us out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Episode one. Dope As Usual podcast. I'm Dope As Yola. From me. From Marty. Drastic Graphics. Thank you so much for watching. Have a dope ass day. Ooh, nice. Yeah. <coughs>